What's up, guys? It's your boy Omnisensei back with part 9 of Reborn in Naruto OC broadcasts the future to the shinobi world. If you enjoy my content, consider buying me a coffee link in the description. Like the video, share, and subscribe. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Ichihamadara licked his lips. His expression showed eagerness for battle. Abruptly, Ichihamadara suddenly looked like Yuzumaki Nagata with disgust. Can you hurry up? At this rate, when we reach the moon, Atsutsuki Kagai will probably end everything. Ichihamadara enviously looked at Atsutsuki Kagai, whose head had disappeared without a trace. If he could only fly himself with such speed, I might as well ride an oki. Yuzumaki Nagato gave a wry smile when he heard Ichihamadara sneer. It's not that he didn't want to be faster, but Chibaku Tensei's speed was just this much. It built up speed too slowly. However, when Madara said so, Yuzumaki Nagato also felt that the speed was a bit slow, especially when he could see Atsutsuki Kagaya just now. After just a few moments, they couldn't see her anymore. They could see the difference from that. Maybe, I can try to speed up a bit. Yuzumaki Nagato stood up, walked to the back of his Shibaku Tensei meteor, and held out his hand. Be careful. I'm going to speed up. Shinra Tensei. Boom. With a loud rumbling sound, Yuzumaki Nagato's repulsive force directly pushed out. Boom. The tremendous force recoiled on Chibaku Tensei. It seemed like an eight ball, struck twice by the white pool ball. It soared upwards with a bang. Oh. Seeing Yuzumaki Nagato's actions, Ichihamadara's eyes suddenly lit up. Me too. Ichihamadara's eyes instantly changed into Manjakyo, and a huge Susanoo appeared on the high-speed Chibaku Tensei meteor. This thing was pure chakra. Although it had substance, it had no weight. Madar. Madara Sensei what are you doing? Yuzumaki Nagato suddenly had a bad feeling when he saw that this time Ichihamadara's full-bodied Susanoo hadn't enveloped the guy. Hold on. Ichihamadara said so, regardless of Yuzumaki Nagato's shout. His hand tightly gripped the surface of the Chibaku Tensei meteor. No, no way. The feeling of foreboding grew stronger, and Yuzumaki Nagato instantly imitated Ichihamadara's movements. He had guessed what Madara was going to do next. Sure enough. In the next moment, he saw the giant Susanoo lift his left foot and kick the Chibaku Tensei. Boom. The huge force hit Chibaku Tensei, and his speed instantly shot up again, heading for the distant moon above. The ancient kingdom of Roran, at the Dragon Veins. A giant shinobi hawk swooped down from the sky and landed on the Dragon Veins. Thank you very much. Sasuke and Izumi jumped off the hawk and thanked the hawk. Because of the constant change of hawks on the way here, they arrived faster than planned. Bang. The giant hawk nodded, then quickly turned into a thick fog and disappeared. This is the place, right? Ichiha Sasuke expectantly asked Ichiha Izumi. They strictly followed the method given by the exam space, so there should be no problem. I already used sensory perception. The space here is very fragile. Ichiha Izumi nodded, and joy appeared on her face. They were right to listen to the exam space. The space around here was already fragile. It was easy to open a special wormhole, and with Ichiha Itachi's stuff as coordinates, it was definitely possible to get Itachi out. Sasuke, keep watch for me. I'm going to start. With that, Ichiha Izumi's eyes began to change rapidly, and bizarre patterns appeared on her pupils, her eternal manjakyo. Her manjakyo shuringen started to spin rapidly, followed by the sudden appearance of a portal in the space in front of her, as if it were a deep black hole. The black hole kept growing, turning to the size of a fist in the blink of an eye. Then, Ichiha Izumi carefully took something out of her arms and threw it out to the black hole. The size of the black hole suddenly exploded, and it had become the size of a head. Looking through the black hole, Ichiha Izumi's eyes were momentarily lost in thought. Sasu curiously looked at Izumi's movements, and saw that the other party seemed to be looking for something in the emptiness. Ichiha Sasu looked puzzled. What an amazing eye technique. The exam space even knew about the evolution of the Manjakyo Shuringen. It's amazing. Ichiha Sasuke narrowed his eyes at Ichiha Izumi, while secretly keeping his guard up. 
Although he wasn't an adult yet, he had awakened his Nanjaku Sharingan, which was much better than that guy Yuzumaki Naruto. Although he couldn't help Izumi Onison, he could still guard her. Just as Sasuke was about to take his eyes off Izumi, Ichiha Izumi suddenly uttered. These eyes are born out of the will to find you. Come back, Itachi. Sasuke also needs you. Sasuke looked at Ichiha Izumi speechlessly, and suddenly he felt that this woman was trying to do something to his brother. It seemed that even if his brother came back, he wouldn't belong to himself. And this woman if you need Itachi to be yours, just say so. What do I need him for I don't want men. You talk too much. Sasuke's heart really wanted to say something. He wanted someone to say the same words to him. But at the moment, there was no one but Izumi, so he could only hold back the annoyance in his mind, and look at Ichiha Izumi. To Sasuke's amazement, the other party's crumbling seemed to have an effect, and under Sasuke's astonished gaze, the black hole grew larger and larger, and had the vague appearance of becoming a portal. This nothing. Ichiha Sasuke detoured behind Izumi, but found nothing in the black hole in front of Ichiha Izumi. Although he could see the black portal in the void, but... It was as if there was a black curtain over it, and Sasuke's eyes couldn't even see the other side of it. Sasuke even used Manjakyo Sharingan, but still couldn't see anything. Suddenly, Sasuke found that Ichiha Izumi's body trembled as if seeing something horrible. Then, suddenly, she reached out her hand and approached the curtain. And, straight through the black portal. This. 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 Ichiha Sasuke stared at Ichiha Izumi without blinking. He felt that now was the moment. Maybe, in the next moment, Ichiha Itachi would be pulled out. Sure enough. Sasuke was surprised to find that a look of surprise had appeared on Ichiha Izumi's face. Success. Ichiha Sasuke felt his heart was about to jump out. Too nervous. Ichiha Sasuke didn't even dare to breathe for fear of disturbing Ichiha Izumi. In the next moment, Ichiha Izumi's hand suddenly pulled back, and a figure wrapped in a black robe suddenly appeared in front of her. None other than Ichiha Itachi. That's not all, in her left hand, she was clutching a red fish basket and fishing rod. An Aizen. Sasuke let out a cheer and looked at the unconscious Ichiha Itachi. Sasuke's whole body was full of joy. He never dreamed that it would work just like that. On the way to the dragon veins, Ichiha Sasuke didn't have any confidence at all. Although he encouraged himself over and over again, the method was given by the exam space surely wouldn't have any problems, but this was unbelievable. Ichiha Sasuke appeared in a flash beside Izumi. He noticed that Ichiha Izumi's body was slightly trembling. And somehow, on her face, tears of blood were flowing. Sasuke, quick. Go Ichiha Izumi's voice was trembling. She now, at last, knew why Ichiha Fugaku had blocked her and Sasuke from saving Ichiha Tachi. He must have known. He must have known that saving Ichiha Tachi would bring the monster to the shinobi world. Damn it. Damn it. Ichiha Izumi looked at the quiet fish basket in her left hand with horror. From her point of view, she could see a strange fish swimming in the fish basket. She didn't know what had happened. When she brought back Ichiha Itachi, because Itachi was wrapped with a red fishing line, she had to bring back this unknown fishing gear together with him. But just as she managed to get both items, the monster that had captured Ichiha Itachi, suddenly glowed all over and shrank countless times, and burrowed into the fish basket. It all happened in a flash, and Ichiha Izumi couldn't react at all. So, she brought the opponent back. Sasuke. Take Itachi and go first. Ichiha Izumi also tried to carry Itachi away, but she couldn't even move anymore out of fear, she could no longer move her legs. What made her even more desperate was that the fish basket had latched onto her hand. And the strange fish in the fish basket seemed to notice something. Moving towards the exit of the fish basket. What's wrong, Izumi Onison? Let me help you. Ichiha Sasuke thought that the other party had been holding the fish basket for a long time, and she was exhausted. He was about to take it over when he heard Ichiha Izumi speak in a stern voice. Don't move quick. Take Itachi and go. Ichiha Izumi's voice had taken on a tearful tone, causing Ichiha Sasuke to freeze. Before he could react, Ichiha Izumi suddenly broke out, directly pushing Ichiha Itachi to Ichiha Sasuke. Then, Ichiha Izumi's eyes were rapidly turning, and the eternal Manjakyo was unleashed again, regardless of the cost. The spatial wormhole took shape again in front of her, and Ichiha Izumi was about to go in with the fish basket, when a strange cry suddenly sounded from the basket. Immediately afterward, a terrifyingly bloody mouth instantly burst out of the fish basket. Crack. There was a crisp sound accompanied by a warm shower of blood on Sasuke's face. 
It should have Sasuke's entire body froze instantly as he watched Izumi, who was left with only the lower half of her body, fall backward. When he reacted and glanced at the monster who had retreated back into the fish basket, Sasu picked up Ichiha Itachi and ran. The taboo has come to the shinobi world among the dragon veins, Ryuji looked at his system in disbelief, wondering what the system was crazy about. System, how long until it's full? Detecting the taboo approaching. Accelerated charging on. Charging completed. Shinobi world entering state of destruction. Entire shinobi world live stream. Open. Swish. As the mechanical voice of the system sounded, Ryuji was overwhelmed by the appearance of three screens in front of him. The first screen showed the moon. Atsusuki Tenari and Senju Hashirama were fighting, and at the top of the screen, there were three split screens playing at the same time. On the first screen, one showed Atsusuki Kagaya flying in the starry sky. With long hair flying in flowing clothes, it was a beauty to behold. In the middle screen, there were three toads and Yuzumaki Naruto. It appeared that they were also heading for the battlefield on the moon. On the third screen, Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Madara were sitting on a meteorite, soaring. From time to time, in addition to the meteorite, there was a huge complete Susanoo that would manually accelerate the two people's ride with its kicker slap. How did the two of them unify their camps? Ryuji's eyebrows slightly clustered, then quickly released. The Ichiha clan had been resurrected, and the shinobi world was about to be destroyed. Not to mention the two of them getting together, even if all these guys in the shinobi world, who were reincarnated from the impure world reincarnation, ended up forming a single camp, Ryuji believed it could happen. Then, Ryuji looked to the second screen. The second screen revealed a battlefield. On the huge battlefield, a group of people was besieging a monster that seemed to be as huge as the number of people. Has the Jubi come out? Seeing the battlefield of the fourth shinobi world war, Ryuji was stunned once again. He didn't think that the fourth shinobi world war would start so soon. Looking at the half-open, half-closed eyes of the Jubi, I don't think they've gathered all the tailed beasts yet. And who is in control of the Jubi right now? The Chiha Bido or Black Setsu. Ryuji shook his head dismissively at the thought of Abido, that stupid bastard. That idiot. Garbage. As a shinobi even more useless than garbage. If you look at the bigger picture, it's at least one planet. The ridiculous thing is, it's only 5 villages, so what's the point of fighting every day? Especially now that Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Madara were flying to the moon with Kagaya, what are these people fighting for? Learn from Atsutsuki, the alien colony. Isn't that even more productive and worthwhile? Why are they acting like pirates who fight to the death for a tiny bit of land, making the islanders suffer? Speaking of pirates, Ryuji's favorite was Enel. The smartest brat in the whole sea. If he defeated those space pirates in a decade or so and made some name for himself, he would return to the pirate planet when he had achieved fame and fortune. Then say. To Fairy Verve. This is vision. This is style. Not great enough. No better than Roger. Maybe, but being the king of a planet seemed better than being the king of the sea. Ryuji shook his head, tossed the thoughts out of his mind, and looked to the third screen. At first glance, he was suddenly surprised. Fuck me. Shit. I've been exposed. Shit. I've been exposed. The exact same noise rang out. Ryuji was in a daze, and his whole head felt as if it had been bombarded by thunder. His mind was full of disbelief. The system exposed him. Luckily, the scene was only a dozen seconds long before it quickly switched, no, pulled up to be exact. It pulled up from where Ryuji was. Then the entire dragon veins appeared on the screen above. After that, two frantically fleeing figures appeared on the screen. Is that Ichiha Sasuke and Itachi? Ryuji narrowed his eyes as he examined the frantically fleeing Sasuke, who was carrying Itachi on his back. A look of horror and terror was solidified on his face. The manjekyo in his eyes were spinning madly. He didn't know if it was the overuse of the eyes or the shock, but tears of blood kept coming out of them. What's this little shit doing? Ryuji oddly watched Ichiha Sasuke. As if it had hurt Ryuji's heart, the screen suddenly turned to the scene behind Sasuke. This image almost scared Ryuji to death. This thing this thing how did this thing end up in the shinobi world? Shouldn't it only exist in those bogus mythical creature sighting claims? Ryuji stared blankly at the monster on the screen and asked, somewhat pleadingly, System, this thing, it's the Leviathan, isn't it yes? Holy shit, it's real. System, how did this thing come out? How did the shinobi world get this thing? This was what you called the taboo. The root cause of the shinobi world's destruction. 
Ryuji curiously watched the monster, which seemed like a giant whale, as it swam through the void. The space around it was beginning to distort with its movements. Especially the ground behind it, obviously it was swimming in mid-air, but the ground behind it was plunged into darkness, like sudden death. And it seemed to have wisdom, slowly hanging behind Ichiha Sasuke, neither fast nor slow. When Sasuke got faster, it would increase in speed. When Sasuke's speed decreased, and it would also decrease as if it was playing with him. Ryuji could see that the Leviathan was now only 100 meters in size, but its body was still growing rapidly. It seemed that it was absorbing the power of the dragon veins. Because of the live broadcast across the Shinobi world, the Atsutsuki clan discovered that the Shuringen could evolve into Rinnegan, and the Byakugan could evolve into Jogen by fusing them, so on a rare occasion, the system sounded a little jammed. So, the strongest member of the Atsutsuki clan, collected all the Rinnegan and fused them. It triggered the taboo and attracted the creature to the Shinobi world to destroy it. Ryuji was dumbfounded. Utterly dumbfounded. He listened to the analysis given to him by the system and simply doubted life. The Atsutsuki clan fused all of the Rinnegan what a fucking talent. No wonder. One pair of Rinnegan almost killed the unbeatable people in the shinobi world. Ryuji couldn't even imagine what would be created when all the Rinnegan were fused together. Right now, is there anyone of the Atsutsuki clan, apart from Kagai, still alive? Ryuji's voice sounded odd. They would be too strong. He thought that in the shinobi world, the Ichiha clan and the Kagaya were already experts in defying death. Unexpectedly, the Atsutsuki clan was too. Atsutsuki Yurashiki is healing in the shinobi world. Sure enough, the Atsutsuki clan is dead, leaving Yurashiki Ryuji shook his head gloomily. Too pitiful. Mamashiki, Kinshiki, and all those other messy shiki, were gone before they had a chance to come out. It's pitiful. Ryuji put the fully charged world gateway with a grin, and was about to take another look at the screen above him, when the system's voice suddenly rang out again. Exam space opening conditions are met. Do you want to open the exam? Hmm. I can open an exam so soon. You can't wait to send the world arc to me, right? Come on, system, open the exam for me. As Ryuji's words fell, his figure instantly disappeared. At the same time, when Ryuji's figure disappeared from the third screen, the whole shinobi world instantly boiled. They looked at the split screen that suddenly appeared on the third screen with horror. On the screen, the strange man who first appeared on the screen had disappeared, replaced by Chiha Sasuke and the huge monster. But who would have thought that the strange man who had appeared in the middle of the split screen would actually appear in the examination space? That's right. In the exam space. Specifically, he was above the exam space. Everyone was shocked. They were stunned to see the weird man looking below at participants on the exam space, while on screen, they saw the whole scene from a high above bird's view through the live broadcast. The most overwhelming thing for everyone was that the other screen as usual, on the live broadcast of the exam, the examinees who were taking the exam this time, were still looking around in disbelief. Who is he? Why is he above the exam space? Everyone speculated on what was going on, but none dared to believe it. It's horrifying. Truly horrifying. The crowd, especially those who had taken the exam, was, at the moment, covered in a cold sweat. They felt a shiver run down their spines at the thought that there were eyes above them watching them, while they were trying to do everything they could to obtain the exam space rewards. This feeling of someone on the ceiling was horrifying. Not only them, but some of the people in the land of Shinobi, as opposed to those who didn't know Ryuji, had fallen into a complete daze. It's him. Haku's exquisite face was filled with shock as he incredulously looked up at Ryuji and rubbed his eyes. No mistake. That's him. How is that possible? Didn't Conan Sensei tell us he defected? What's going on? Also, what exactly is his relationship with the exam space? Seeing the other party sitting comfortably in a bed of mist above the exam space, Haku's entire being was confused. At the moment, he seemed like a thousand questions machine, but no one could give him the answers. Not only Haku but also the other teammate from Ryuji's team, as well as the others who had seen Ryuji, were all staring at Ryuji in disbelief right now. Could it be that he's the ultimate enemy of the land of Shinobi? No one knew who said it first, but the weak voice made everyone instantly frown. At first, they thought that the enemy of the shinobi world was Akatsuki's Yuzumaki Nagato, but then came out of Black Setsu. When they believed it was Black Setsu, Atsutsuki Kagaya came out. That's not counting Ichihamadar. 
Immediately following the moon's full, someone other than Atsutsuki Kagaya was actually trying to destroy the shinobi world. Damn it. Now, Kagaya was headed for the moon. Anyone could see that she was going to stop the person on the moon, but then this happened now here came another man, the man behind the exam space. The crowd of the shinobi world looked at the man in breathless horror and speechless disbelief. No matter who the other party was and what his purpose was of placing the exam space in the shinobi world, the other party could control such a divine existence, as the exam space was how strong was this guy. No one knew. Everyone looked at Ryuji in horror, speculating on his purpose, but some, too, were amicable towards the guy. It's just that this friendly voice, before it could make any waves, was drowned out by other voices. Right now, the exam space hasn't done anything to harm the shinobi world. I think, maybe, he's doing it for the shinobi world. Ha, and gain nothing. He gave people rewards. He must be planning on asking for something in return. Yes, perhaps, he's out to destroy the shinobi world. Yes, yes, perhaps he's the real culprit behind the moon's falling. TSK. Can't you grow a brain? A ninja looked at the man who had just spoken with disdain. His sleeves were rolled up as if he was going to kill the other man. Who's Kanoha's first Hokage, Senju Hashirama fighting? Can't you see? It's the guy in the damn blue clothes who's controlling the moon. Atsutsuki Tenari. The speaker was gnashing his teeth, and he stared at the screen as if he wanted to eat someone. Ha, a mere civilian, how dare he resist the shinobi hadn't finished his sentence when a pair of white eyes snapped up to him, causing him to swallow his next words immediately. He had a feeling that if he said one more word, the boy would tear him apart. His heart pounded violently, and cold sweat instantly appeared on his face. A drop of sweat fell to the floor, bursting into several blobs, and the faint sound interrupted the shinobi's daze. Anger appeared on his face as he realized that he had been intimidated by a single civilian boy, as he reflected on the fact that he himself was a genin. Just before he could do anything, the crowd behind him saw the boy opposite him, and they were instantly stunned. Then, they shouted out in joy. Hayuganiji ah. Hayuganiji. What? Hayuganiji. The fifth place in the survival exam. In an instant, sounds of people being surprised rang out, and a large number of people gathered. It's really you. The girl about the same age as Hayuga Niji suddenly jumped out, pointing at Niji with stars in her eyes. The top five in the shinobi exam, Yuzumaki Naruto and Sasuke, hadn't even grown up. Sunaid was a normal woman. The last one was not even fully human. Therefore, unbeknownst to Niji, he became extremely popular in the shinobi world. Especially among women of the same age, Hayuga Niji soared to the top of the best boyfriend candidates list. Although he was still a little young, it was still a cool shota compared with those two childish boys. In another two years, he would definitely be great. Those powerful, distant eyes coupled with strong abilities, he was also from Kanoha's Hayuga clan. In the eyes of the vast majority of women in the shinobi world, this was a proper husband material. It's just that Hayuga Niji didn't know all this. At this moment, seeing the crowd surrounding him, the frightened Hayuga Niji fled. It took a great deal of effort for Hayuganiji to escape. He reflected on what had just happened with amazement and uncertainty. He was trying to save Hinata Ojusama and was still on his way to a Megakur. As a result, Hinata Ojusama had already appeared in the exam space. Finding a deserted spot, Hayuganiji looked up at the screen of the exam space and waited for the exam to begin. It wasn't just him. Both the crowd of Shinobi World and the few people in the exam space were waiting. Wife, this time we may be in a bad situation. Fukasaku and Shima squinted at the several people in the exam space. They never thought that the exam space would actually pull in three members of the Toad clan. What's even more frightening was that a short distance before them, a figure with a long dress and long hair hanging to the ground was standing there looking at them. It was Atsutsuki Kagaya. Husband, let's take it as it comes. Shima sighed. She too had this sense of foreboding. Just as the two toads were talking quietly, there was a sudden change in the exam space. Exam start. The exam is starting. Exam type. Multiple choice questions. Examinees. Atsutsuki Kagai, Atsutsuki Tenari, Ichiha Madara, Yuzumaki Nagato, Senju Hashirama, Yuzumaki Naruto, Hayuga Hinata. Why are all the people on the moon in this exam? In the shinobi world, countless people looked at the examinees, instantly found their common elements. Everyone who took the exam this time was humans who were now on the moon. The reason why they said human was because, at the moment, there were three toads sitting alone in the moon's sandy landscape. 
At the moment, the three toads were watching the live broadcast overhead, and were doubting what had happened. Especially Gamma Bunter. Just now that human boy was on his head, and now he's gone up to the exam space. Son of a bitch, what do we do now? The Kasaku asked Shima beside him, looking bewildered. The Great Toad Sage ordered the two of them to bring Yuzumaki Naruto here to see Lot Satsuki Tanari. But what now? Yuzumaki Naruto ran away. But fortunately, at least they have seen the exam space. They knew that Naruto went to the exam and would return later. The most uncomfortable thing for the two toads was that Atsutsuki Kagai also came to the moon, who should they seal first? This put the two toads in a difficult conundrum. Just as the two toads were struggling with who Naruto would seal later, the first question in the exam space had already appeared. It's just that at the moment the question appeared, everyone's breath was stifled. Anger. Bitterness. Atsutsuki Kagai was furious. First question. Which of the following options is the real culprit who sealed Atsutsuki Kagaya? A. Gamma Mare. B. Tenji from the Land of Ancestors. C. Atsutsuki Hagoromo. D. Atsutsuki Hamar. As the first question appeared, Atsutsuki Kagaya's long hair instantly exploded, and her clothes billowed. At the moment, she was beyond scary. Around her, there was a strong tyrannical aura. A strong sense of oppression filled the exam space. For a moment, everyone was scared, for fear that, when the correct answer came out, Atsutsuki Kagaya's whole person would blow up. Right now, Atsutsuki Kagaya was like a ticking time bomb, with the possibility of blowing up sometime soon. She angrily looked at the questions from the exam space. She never dreamed that the exam space would give her such a question. When the exam space first appeared, she was still in the seal, watching the exam space to observe the current shinobi world. Every time the exam space appeared, she was watching closely like a little fangirl. During her aimless life in the seal, she had been studying the implications in the exam questions. So, she understood the exam space too well. Once the exam space asked the real of something, then the answers that were floating around were bound to be wrong. In other words, option C, Atsutsuki Hagoromo, and option D, Atsutsuki Hamer, listed out in the question, wouldn't be the correct answer. Definitely. Crack crack crack. Her ten fingers tightly gripped as Atsutsuki Kagaya looked at the giant screen coldly. It couldn't be Tenji from the Land of Ancestors. He was just a normal human without chakra, and he has never met his children. So, no matter how you think about it, the answer to this question is A. Gamma Mare. That toad. Atsutsuki Kagaya's eyes bloomed with an icy glow, she knew that there was a toad beside her two children. But that toad Gamma Mare really had the guts damn it. Damn it. Atsutsuki Kagaya's face looked extremely gloomy. Her long hair and clothes were fluttering behind her, which made her whole momentum even more breathtaking. Naruto, I'm scared. Hanada's weak voice sounded, hiding behind Naruto in fear. Her pair of small hands clutched Naruto's shirt. Don't be afraid. Hinata, I'll protect you. Naruto turned around and naturally, held Hayuga Hinata's little hand. Hmm. Hinata nodded, with a blush on her face. Hayuga Hiyashi silently looked at his daughter on the screen with a complicated expression. He didn't care about the answer to this question at all. What he cared about was his own daughter. Now, she was going to be taken away. Although his heart was prepared for that time, now Naruto had no established future. In the new future, it was impossible for him to become the sixth Hokage. His daughter was associating with such a person. However, he understood Hinata's character, soft outside and hard inside. She chose Yuzumaki Naruto, and he himself didn't want to be the one to hinder her wishes. Fortunately I have another daughter. Hahaha. <laughs> Hayuga Hiyashi's eyes flashed. At the same time, he secretly made up his mind. He had to watch over Hanabi as she grew up. The Mount Maiboku the Great Toad Sage, also known as Gamma Mare, had lived for an unknown number of years. At this moment, he slowly opened his tired eyes and looked at the screen above. You're going to find out after all his voice was as small as a mosquito. Even the toads waiting below, and the few guard toads, didn't hear him. Unfortunately, it's too late. As the voice fell, Gamma Mare fell asleep again. No one knew what he meant when he said it was too late. Not only Mount Maiboku's Gamma Mare, but somewhere in the shinobi world, a translucent figure suddenly appeared. He was wearing a six-path robe and had lofty horns on his head. His eyes shined with the Rinnegan, and he had a Shuringen-like mark on his forehead. This was the Sage of Six Paths of the Shinobi World. At this moment, his gaze burned at the screen above, the expression on his face was indescribably mixed. Mother you came out after all. 
Then his gaze shifted from Matsutsuki Kagaya's body to Naruto's. A sir as the sage of six paths, his eyes were so sharp that he could see the oil seal of the toad oil beat in Naruto at a glance. He instantly knew that a sir had been strengthened by Gamma Mare. Indra also needs to be strengthened. This will create the balance that could seal mother with these words. The sage of six paths instantly disappeared. When he reappeared, it was in front of Ichiha Sasuke, who was frantically running. At this moment, Sasuke had reached his limit. His eyes had blurred, and his manjakyo had been depleted. He had even overdrawn the source, his manjakyo Shuringen. After this, Ichiha Sasuke's manjakyo would be completely ruined. The Sage of Six Paths looked at Ichiha Sasuke expressionlessly. The moment before Sasuke passed out, his soul instantly entered Ichiha Sasuke's body. Almost instantly, Ichiha Sasuke's momentum suddenly changed. Roar at the moment when the soul of the Sage of Six Paths controlled Sasuke's body, the beast hanging far behind Sasuke let out a loud roar. Then, the originally huge Leviathan, which was about 100 meters, suddenly began to expand like a balloon. 1000, 2000, 3000 it was still growing. This. Seeing the great changes behind him, the Sage of Six Paths' expression suddenly changed. Looking at the behemoth behind him in horror, he saw that the Leviathan was covered with jagged scales, and every scale had strange protruding patterns. No. It was more like a face. A soul. One by one, they wailed silently. Their eyes seemed to be moving, flashing with an eerie red light. This scene made the Sage of Six Paths instantly feel his scalp go numb. This what the hell is this? Somehow, he felt an inexplicable gravitational force was emanating from the beast. No, not an attraction, but a pull. Sage of Six Paths subconsciously looked at the source of the gravitational pull, and horror instantly appeared on his face. What attracted him was actually a scale. What made him even more devastated was that the face on that scale was his. That. What the hell is that thing? Indra has done something outrageous. The Sage of Six Paths looked at the monster in front of him, feeling pins and needles on his scalp. He could swear that he had never seen anything so terrifying. The shinobi world couldn't and shouldn't have such a horrible thing. Looking at the monster's growing body, in the blink of an eye, it had grown to 10,000 meters. The Sage of Six Paths was shocked. It was as if a chill ran up Sasuke's feet, up along his spine, hitting him straight in the soul and sending his soul into an instant freeze. Roar. Another roar rang out, and the Sage of Six Paths instantly reacted. Now wasn't the time to stop and stare, that scale was attracting him more and more. He had to go. With the power of his soul, Ichiha Sasuke and Itachi instantly flickered away from the monster. In the next moment, he reappeared in the Ichiha clan's area, in Kanoha. A translucent Sage of Six Paths emerged from Ichiha Sasuke's body. The Sage of Six Paths looked at Ichiha Sasuke and his brother without any emotions on his face. Ichiha Sasuke was Indra, but his eyes were damaged. Ichiha Tachi was nothing and was already on the verge of death. It was clear to him who had more value and who should be saved. What's more, the presence of Ichiha Tachi's eyes also saved him a great deal of strength. The Sage of Six Paths' eyes looked slightly dull. With an unnoticeable move, Ichiha Tachi's eyes instantly flew out of his sockets and into Ichiha Sasuke's eyes. Watching Sasuke's eyes fusing rapidly, the Sage of Six Paths' gaze slightly condensed. He didn't know what that monster was and wasn't sure. However whatever it was, the immediate priority now was to seal his mother once again. Therefore, improving Indra's strength took priority. With Sage of Six Paths' right hand pointing like a sword, the immense soul power was instantly transformed into the purest form, and poured into Ichiha Sasuke's body. Ichiha Sasuke's eyes slowly rotated, and the Manjakyo turned into the Eternal Manjakyo. One of Sasuke's eyes turned into the Rinnegan. Turning one of Sasuke's eyes into the Rinnegan, the Sage of Six Paths stopped his hand. He couldn't give Indra to Rinnegan. Otherwise, the other party would surpass him. This was something the Sage of Six Paths couldn't tolerate. Just when the Sage of Six Paths greatly improved Sasuke's strength, in Roran, the monster had attracted many people's attention. Roran's ancient Dragon Veins patrol team also found it, and they tried to attack it with Jutsu. The monster was tens of thousands of feet in size, even the city walls were half the size of the monster's scale. A Jutsu smashed into the monster, and suddenly the image of the wielder was reproduced on the scale struck by the Jutsu. A human face protruded from the scale, with its mouth wide open, and an eerie glow emanated from its eyes, looking at the wielder himself. One by one, the wielders were staring at their own faces. 
They felt their scalp go numb and were about to back away before they could retreat. An ominous voice instantly sounded in their ears. Their consciousness instantly blurred. In the next moment, when their consciousness was clear, they were shocked to find that their bodies were on the opposite side. No. This is impossible. Their souls wailed in the scales, but their voices simply couldn't come out. Their souls had been imprisoned in the scales forever. What made them even more desperate was that under the scales that imprisoned their souls, new scales have emerged. Roar roar. Tempting food disappeared from in front of him, and the monster was instantly enraged. After killing all the ants that were trying to attack it with bizarre means, the monster's eyes snapped open, and instantly a spatial rift appeared around it. With a slight move of its beak, the huge beast, like a starship, drilled into the huge crack in space. In the next moment, it was already thousands of miles away. It was moving towards Konoha. Because the screens that were originally live broadcasting the monster were now showing Ryuji, the people of the shinobi world weren't aware of the changes. Coupled with the fact that only a few shinobi at the dragon veins were under attack, the information didn't spread too fast. Therefore, the crowd of people was still concentrating on the screens above them. On the screen, the astonishingly imposing Atsutsuki Kagaya answered with unparalleled dominance, as if no one was allowed to object. Especially Atsutsuki Tanari and Yuzumaki Nagato. Atsutsuki Tanari didn't care about this, anyway. In his view, with his Tensigen, no one could stop him now. It's all coming to an end soon. It's just that, to his annoyance, that guy named Yuzumaki Naruto was holding his wife, Hinata's hand. Atsutsuki Tanari had decided that, when this exam was over, he was going to tear Yuzumaki Naruto, the guy who defiled his wife, apart, even before the destruction of the shinobi world. The destruction of the shinobi world can wait, but Yuzumaki Naruto's death can never wait for this question, I choose a... Gamma Mare. The sound of Atsutsuki Kagaya's answer rang out. In the next moment, her answer was deemed correct by the exam space. Then, it gave them a line of text, analyzing the question in a thoughtful way. In order to steal the power of chakra, Gamameru compelled Atsutsuki Hagoromo and Atsutsuki Hamera to seal Atsutsuki Kagai, and volunteered to provide the method and plan for sealing. Crack. Bang. At the moment she saw the analysis, Atsutsuki Kagaya's hands instantly squeezed. The air in her palm actually sent out an explosive sound. Atsutsuki Kagaya coldly withdrew her gaze from the analysis, looked to the side, and slowly spoke out. She knew that in the exam space, everything she did would be seen by everyone in the shinobi world. Gamma Mare. If you're still alive, come and claim your death before me. Otherwise, I will slaughter the entire Toad clan. Her killing intent was almost condensed into substance. The people and beasts of the shinobi world saw such a scene on their screens. Husband, I think, something's not right, Shima lowered her head in contemplation, and there was a hint of tension in her voice. Don't think about it. Wife, you and our son should go back to Mount Maiboku first. Fukusaku's anxious face was a little hard to read. Atsutsuki Kagaya got one question right, and Fukusaku felt that there was a good chance that her strength would be improved again. Therefore, the method of using Yuzumaki Naruto to seal the other party was likely to fail. In addition to that, she was furious with the Toad clan. Fukusaku, as one of the leaders of the Toad clan, had the desire to escape back to Mount Maiboku. But what the Great Toad Sage told them to do must be done. To steal the power of Chakra. Seeing the analysis given by the exam space, the Sage of Six Paths, who was in the Ichiha clan's area in Kanoha, was stunned. He got at the exam space's live broadcast. Wasn't it because Mother killed innocent people, so she had to be sealed? Wasn't she going to kill everyone in the shinobi world and create white zetsus? How did this become Gamameru's scheme? And from what mother said, could it be that Gamameru is still alive? How is that possible? Even my true body, the sage of six paths, is dead that toad lived much longer than I did. How is that possible? Question 2. Atsutsuki Kagaya made white zetsu in large quantities for the following reason. A. Resist foreign enemies. B. Kill innocent people indiscriminately. C. Nothing to do, just having some fun. D. She doesn't like them. I'm looking at the second question that appeared, everyone in the shinobi world was stunned. After what happened last time, they thought that the exam space was enough to take care of Ichihamidara, but unexpectedly compared to Atsutsuki Kagaya, Ichihamidara had it easier. There were two questions related to her. After all, Ichihamidara also had this kind of treatment. But in this list of answers, half of the answers were clearly nonsense. Come on, come on, I'll give you an analysis. 
in the familiar casino, a veteran confidently and slowly looked at the questions on the screen above his head. Exam question interpreter was a new type of profession in the shinobi casino, used to entice some people to make wrong bets. After all, this kind of gambling method couldn't be cheated on. The only benefit was to collect fees from these guys, that was all. Therefore, in order to maximize the benefits, the casino would send people to pretend to be guests that would participate and hinder the guests. There were also certain code words between the exam interpreter and some of his own people. The best way was to choose multiple choice questions. If the interpreter of the first question intended to choose A, then he would bet A plus 1 equals B. In the second question, when the interpreter said D, he would bet D plus 2 equals B. And so on. Because when the exam space appeared, most of everyone's attention was on the exam space. No one would pay attention to the casino's means, so for a while, the casino gained a lot. This interpreter, originally just a wandering man, who was forced by life, jumped into this kind of job. He gently coughed twice and cleared his throat. Ha ha ha, Mori is going to analyze again. Come on, come on, Mori, this question is impossible to predict. But, I still want to choose A. A voice rang out, making some people in the casino look at the old veteran in the casino. Because in order to trap more people, he usually chose some correct answers. Generally speaking, he had to be right at least 3 out of 5 times. On these 3 occasions, the casino people wouldn't be involved. They would only be involved in a certain one. Although it's only one shot, they would secure a lot of profit with minimum activity. It was precisely because of that, these veterans were surrounded by a cluster of followers. They all made small profits by following the veteran, so they praised the veteran. That's right, that's right. Thinking about it, you can choose A for this question. But if you choose A, wouldn't it mean that she's a good person? And the sage of six paths becomes a bad person instead. Haha, <laughs> regardless if she's a good guy or bad guy, I'm not a shinobi. Anyone who doesn't affect my winnings is a good guy. Haha, <laughs> ha, yes, yes. The first question, sage of six paths, was played by a toad. He has talent. Haha, <laughs> ha. ahem. Mori lightly coughed, and for a moment, the noise in the casino died down. First of all, I would like to emphasize that this second question absolutely wouldn't be answered with D. Emphasis on second question D. Yes. Casino personnel pretending to be customers in the crowd, suddenly moved when they heard the familiar code words. That's right. The other party had given them instructions. This question should be answered with B. Looking up at the screen, they lifted the chips in their hands, and prepared to place them on B. The code word was sent out and understood. Looking around the crowd, Mori saw some people in the crowd stirring, and the veteran gambler suddenly moved. He had given out the correct answer. Now, he only needed to guide everyone to the wrong answer. People certainly couldn't be fooled to choose C or D. It wasn't in line with the persona he created. Then it can only be an A. Mori's eyes gleamed with the color of wisdom as he slowly said, We are all veterans. Look at this question, the latter two can be directly excluded. As for the first two his tone was slightly raised as he looked at the crowd with triumph. Hey, Mori, don't try to hype it up. Hey. Mori, stop trying to raise the price. Everyone understood Mori's meaning. They were used to it. He wouldn't speak again unless he was satisfied with the reward from them. Instantly, a small number of chips was placed in front of Mori. Mori glanced at the number of chips in front of him, estimated the value, and slowly said. In the exam space, the most difficult questions usually make the impossible possible. In order to enhance his persuasiveness, he even quoted the scriptures. As in the previous question, the most unlikely answer was Gamma Mare, and as it turns out, it was correct. Mori proudly stroked the goatee at his chin. So, I think we should choose A for this question. Of course, this is just my personal opinion. It doesn't matter. Winning or losing is your own, it has nothing to do with me. Mori waved his hand, taking himself out of the equation first, then coming back in with a comment that could mislead the crowd into misidentifying his purpose. If any of you get it right, I'd still like a little reward money for information. Hahaha. <laughs> After he said that, he laughed to himself. He glanced around at the crowd that was in deep thought. Fearing that these guys would think of the right answer to bet on, he had to distract them. It's weird too. Atsutsuki Kagaya killed innocent people indiscriminately, to defend against foreign enemies, she is the progenitor of chakra in the shinobi world. I wonder what kind of enemy could make her so defensive. As his words fell, everyone was instantly lost in thought because of him. They were subconsciously thinking along with him. Time was up. 
Mori vaguely gave a look to the person in charge of the bets, and the person in charge of the bets immediately instructed. Come on, place your bets. Place your bets. Hearing the sound, all the gamblers froze for a moment. They quickly thought about it and then went to choose A. Only a few people chose B. As for C and D, except for a very few small chips, no one chose those options at all. Okay. Seeing that the chips on option A were stacked into a small mountain, a glint of joy flashed in Mori's eyes. Not only could he receive gratuities from the guests, but he would also get a commission from the casino. This time, it's no less than 100,000 Ryo. Mori once again gave the owner of the casino a winning look. This time, he was sure he would profit. Everyone chose A at his behest. But as everyone knew, these people were only small-time gamblers, and he was already high in the clouds. At the beginning of his analysis, he just used that the most unlikely solution is usually the correct one to say A. But what no one could have imagined was that, according to the usual way people chose things, like the 50-50 theory and follow your heart, option A was incorrect. I don't need to think about it. Atsutsuki Kagaya herself would choose A. So, how could A be correct? He was too familiar with the exam spaces routine. For this question, Atsutsuki Kagaya would choose A, and the correct answer would be B. His thoughts were surging. Then, he cast his eyes on the live broadcast screen. Sure enough, on the screen, Atsutsuki Kagaya was slowly speaking. For this question, I choose A. Right. I'm truly right. When he heard Atsutsuki Kagaya acting just like Madara before, the corners of Mori's mouth slightly twitched. Resist foreign enemies. That monster. Could it be that back then, Hamura and I really misjudged mother. In Konohazu Chuha clan area, the sage of six paths looked at his mother, who had made her choice, with a gloomy and uncertain expression. He was caught in self-doubt. Back then, he and Hamura approached their mother more than once. However, they were forcefully dismissed by her each time. Their mother didn't even want to think about their opinions. Then he met Gamma Mare on a trip. Under Gamma Mare's guidance, he saw the sufferings of the people in the shinobi world, and adopted the advice of the other party to seal his mother. Did I really do something wrong? The Sage of Six Paths wouldn't have thought like this before seeing the monster. But now, he couldn't bear to think otherwise. After all, that monster was certainly not in existence from the shinobi world, whether in terms of aura or means. Thinking back to the weirdness of the other party's body, Sage of Six Paths slightly pondered. If Mother made White Zetsu in large quantities to defend against that horrible guide those White Zetsu had no thoughts no soul maybe it would really work. Oh. Thinking of this, the Sage of Six Paths was surprised. He found that everything surprisingly made sense. At this moment, obviously, in the state of a wandering soul, he actually felt like he was suffocating a bit. He took a deep breath. Although he had already stopped breathing, it seemed as if doing so would reduce his stress. No way. He had to, but he still couldn't believe it. The Sage of Six Paths gaze shifted several times. If mother really made the white Zetsus resist this kind of thing, didn't my younger brother and I misjudge her? Wasn't we bewitched by Gamma Mare? The more the Sage of Six Paths thought about it, the more confused he got. After living in the shinobi world in his soul form for many years, he naturally understood that the present strength of the shinobi world was no match for that strange beast. The other party was so bizarre that even he almost died. Swish. The Sage of Six Paths soul once again drilled into Uchiha Sasuke's body. Uchiha Sasuke, who had fainted on the ground, instantly stood up, then his body flickered and disappeared into thin air. In place, only Uchiha Itachi, his eye sockets were gushing blood, remained. His body had already reached its limit. At this moment, with the loss of blood, his life was rapidly fading. For this question, I choose A. Atsutsuki Kagaya's dignified voice rang out. No one knew the correct answer to this question better than she did. Because that's what she had been doing. She ran to the shinobi world from the Atsutsuki clan to look after the god tree. However, she ate the chakra fruit naturally. She had to be wary of those people from the Atsutsuki clan. Correct answer. This time, the exam space gave a short reply. There wasn't even an analysis before it moved on to the next question. The crowd in the exam space didn't even feel that there was anything wrong with this. After all, their minds were very tense right now. Because of Atsutsuki Kagaya's strength, they didn't get a chance to get involved, but their spirits were also rapidly consumed by the tense feeling. But the people of the shinobi world didn't think so. Especially those people in the casino. Hahaha. <laughs> Mori. You're awesome. Awesome. 
Saying so, the casino guests excitedly rushed up, took out a stack of chips, and threw them into Mori's arms. Haha, <laughs> after listening to Mori, I won again. Come on, come on, Mori. Here's your reward. For your good luck. Yeah, awesome. We profited a lot because of Mori. We shouldn't be petty. Saying that, the group of people rewarded the old veteran. Their mouths were full of praises, hoping that he would help them with the next question. The owner of the casino coldly looked at the old veteran, whose face was filled with cold sweat. How dare you take advantage of my casino? You came to my establishment to take my money. The owner of the casino stared at the veteran, and behind him, two hired wandering shinobi also looked at him coldly, which made him sweat even more. If these were normal times, these people's reward could kill him with joy. Now, death was coming how could he be happy? At the same time, some people in the shinobi world also narrowed their eyes and examined Atsutsuki Kagai on the live broadcast screen. At the moment, they were also a little confused. They were now perplexed. Was Atsutsuki Kagai a good guy or bad guy? If Atsutsuki Kagai is the good guy, doesn't that make Gamamaru the bad guy? What kind of bad guys is that Gamamaru? Is it at Yuzumaki Nagato's level or Black Setsu's level? Ichihabito wasn't even on the top list of bad guys anymore. The minds of everyone in the shinobi world were spinning because of these questions. At this moment, the third question of the exam space had already appeared. With the emergence of the third question, people in the shinobi world were even more confused. Question 3. What is Gamamaru's purpose in taking Atsutsuki Kagaya's powers? A. To take Atsutsuki Kagaya's power. B. Defend against foreign enemies, and let the three sacred places in the shinobi world live on. C. Merit to become the next great toad sage. This looking at the third question that appeared, everyone was rendered speechless. Especially that option A, Gamamaru took Atsutsuki Kagaya's power, in order to take Atsutsuki Kagaya's power. That what the hell is that? At this moment, somewhere in the shinobi world, Ichiha Sasuke was holding two white zetsus in each of his hands. The white zetsus, although they could use wood release and hide underground, but for the strong, they were like earthworms. If they wanted to find them, they could always find a few. Ichiha Sasuke looked cold. He was about to perform an experiment with the two white zetsus. He wanted to see if these white zetsus that had no independent thoughts, were really made to defend against that kind of monster. If that was true Mount Maiboku. Ichiha Sasuke was about to make a move when he suddenly saw the third question in the exam space live broadcast. The answer to this question should be the Sage of Six Paths, who was controlling Ichiha Sasuke's body, slightly moved his gaze. Thousands of years ago, he may have been somewhat ignorant of the Sage mode, and even needed to learn Jutsu and Senjutsu from Gamamaru. But now, after thousands of years, he had fully understood the relationship between natural energy and chakra. The limit of chakra was Senjutsu chakra. Only when it reached this level could it be a match for natural energy. In other words, ordinary jutsu had no damaging effect on a shinobi who had practiced to the level of six paths. Only the same level of senjutsu or tojutsu could hurt him. As for the shinobi world, according to him, there were three sage regions, as the origin of natural energy, including Mount Maiboku. Back then, his mother, as the Jubi's Jinchuriki, raised the god tree in the shinobi world, which constantly produced and absorbed chakra. This greatly violated the natural energy of the planet, and affected the three sage regions. Is this, is this why Gamamaru approached us? The sage of six paths expression slightly changed. He felt that he was infinitely close to the real answer. The answer was even crying out for him. The sage of six paths took a deep look at the screen. His figure flickered and instantly disappeared. Now he knew the reason why Gamamaru had approached them. But whether the white zetsus his mother created could resist that monster, it still had to be confirmed. Swish. The Sage of Six Paths appeared above the beast again. At the moment of his appearance, the familiar gravitational force came again, causing Sage of Six Paths expression to change instantly. This time, he felt that the pull emitted by the beast was stronger. Without saying a word, the two white zetsus in his hands were thrown directly at the monster's back. Ha. Ha. The two white zetsus landed on the monster in an extremely unsightly position, then surprisingly climbed up and angrily looked at Ichiha Sasuke, who was hovering above. Immediately afterwards, two wood release attacks instantly shot out of their hands and headed upwards. As if sensing the chakra fluctuation, black smoke instantly appeared on the monster's body, enveloping the two white zetsus and their attacks. This watching two black Zetsus bodies instantly melt, the Sage of Six Paths tore open the void and fled without saying anything. 
At the moment he disappeared, below the beast's huge head snapped around. The space where the Sage of Six Paths was located, actually became distorted under its gaze. Not seeing anyone, the monster slowly looked back as before and then sniffed gently. Roar with a loud roar, a dark tunnel instantly broke open in front of it. If a Chihasasuk were here, he would surely be horrified to find that what this beast used was actually a Chihazumi's eye technique. Roar. Once again, the portal in front of it continued to grow bigger. Then, the landscape behind the spatial portal also slowly appeared the huge wall enclosing a shinobi village, the most central location, and four massive stone faces. It was Konoha. It was from an eagle's eye view. The portal exit opened by the beast was just above Konoha. Someone, go see, what's going on. In Konoha, root space. Shimura Danzo frowned at the sudden dimming lights outside and slowly spoke. He hadn't stepped out of Kanoha's route for a long time since he was exposed in the exam space last time. It was embarrassing. It was also too heartbreaking. Thinking of Tsunade's attitude of ignoring him after taking office, Shimura Danzo felt furious. He was the darkness of Kanoha, the root of Kanoha. He shed blood, sweat, and tears for Kanoha. In the end, is this the kind of treatment they give me? The fifth Hukage and the other shinobi villages went to defeat the land of shinobi. Nearly all the shinobi were drawn away, but no one thought of his root. Are they thinking that my root is that bad? Dan 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 Zosama. It's not good, it's the monster. That monster that was originally on the live broadcast. What's all the panic about? Shimura Danzo coldly looked at the Anbu member who rushed in and put away the scroll of seals in front of him. All the successive generations of Hokage had gone out. He was the one with the most authority in Kanoha right now. Looking at the forbidden scrolls left behind by the second Hokage was reasonable for him. These days, he had figured it out. The essential meaning of the impure world reincarnation was double suicide, and when it came to double suicide, he had the most knowledge and confidence. Arbitrarily, he wanted to learn all the powerful forbidden arts in the scrolls. Then kill them all. Hearing Danzo's words, the Anbu member jolted, then a cold sweat rolled down behind his mask. Tell me, what's going on? Danzo didn't frown. Root members were all selected by him personally. He knew what the guy was like. Generally, it was impossible for him to be in such a panic. Right now, there must be something wrong. Danzo Sama. Monster. A monster bigger than the Kayabi. A monster that seemed to swim like a fish appeared above Kanoha. It's going to invade Kanoha. The Anbu expressed his dread with all his might, and by the end, he even shouted it out. Invading Kanoha. When Shimura Danzo heard that, his expression instantly changed. In the next moment, his figure disappeared from the spot and rushed outside route. Kanahagakur is about to be destroyed. Order in the shinobi world is about to be destroyed. Examination on hold. Opening live broadcast. Above the space, the pop-up system window suddenly popped up in front of Ryuji. Before he could react, a screen suddenly appeared in front of him, not only in front of him, but also in front of everyone in the exam space in the shinobi world. This scene instantly startled everyone. What's that? Why is another live broadcast screen appearing? A second live broadcast. What is the exam space doing? Seeing the changes in the exam space, everyone suddenly froze, and then began to discuss. Even the crowd in the exam space was confused by the changes that were sticking out in the exam space at this moment. The answer to the third question isn't even answered yet. Why? Are you going to analyze it with a video directly? What's going on here? Ichiha Madara asked Yuzumaki Nagato in a whisper. His exposure to the exam space was short, and he was somewhat unclear as to what this was all about. I don't know. Yuzumaki Nagato shook his head. In the previous exam space, the live screen only appeared when there was a video analysis. But now, the answer to the third question hadn't been announced yet. Why did it appear? Live. The destruction of the shinobi world. On the screen, a few big words slowly appeared, which made everyone's expression change. Atsusuki Tuneri, who was also in the exam space, smiled and shook his head. It seems that this video is about me. Atsusuki Tuneri's light blue tensigan blinked. He expectantly looked at the screen where the image slowly appeared. Is the exam space saying this because I've already succeeded? Could it be that a lot of time has passed in the shinobi world during this exam, and the moon had already crashed into Earth? Where is my chakra cannon? On the battlefield, at the allied shinobi forces side, the roar of the fourth rakage rang out. It instantly resonated throughout the battlefield. 
Shortly after the war between the Allied Shinobi forces and the Land of Shinobi came to a halt, Ichihabito came out of nowhere. No, not Ichihabito, but Black Setsu. It was Ichihabito controlled by Black Setsu. He summoned the demonic statue of the Outer Path in the center of the Allied Shinobi forces camp. What was even more shocking to everyone was that only one of the nine eyes of the demonic statue of the Outer Path was closed. This meant that this demonic statue had gathered eight tailed beasts. As long as the Hachibi was collected, it would be fully revived. Rekich, what are you doing? The blow was repelled by the giant tentacles of the demonic statue of the Outer Path, and Senju Tsunade's figure appeared next to the fourth Rekich. The fourth Rekich turned his head, facing Senju Tsunade, who was looking at him fiercely. Naruto and Senju Hashirama were up there, she couldn't let the other party mess things up. Yes, Rekich, the exam space might be manipulated, so don't mess around with it yet. Anoki's figure also appeared beside the fourth Rekage and gently advised. Hearing Anoki's words, the fourth Rekage's face sank once again. Although that image was only short-lived, it quickly became one with other screens of the exam space, but the man did appear above the exam space. It was only a moment, but that was clearly above the exam space. Besides, I think it's not that simple. Anoki squinted at the screen where the picture slowly appeared, then said, Black Setsu summoned the demonic statue of the Outer Path, in order to find the Hachibi's Jinchuriki. The Chihabido has already gotten the Rinnegan, and Black Setsu clearly wants to transform Ibido into a Six Paths. And now Atsutsuki Kagai is on the moon Anoki said. His expression suddenly changed, and he looked at the new screen where the image had appeared in horror. What's that? On the screen, a giant whale-like monster was slowly popping its head out above Kanoha. Just half of the head was already thousands of meters big. It was half the size of Kanoha. That. 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 Hanabi. On the battlefield, Hayuga Hiyashi's frightened eyes were fixed on the screen. Kanoha is at its weakest now. Not to mention cage-level powerhouses, there wasn't even an elite shinobi there. It's over. All over. The Kanoha shinobi stood in a daze. He didn't know what the monster was, and why it appeared above Kanoha. But the problem now was that, as long as the monster landed, Kanoha would surely be destroyed. The destruction this time would be even more thorough than the destruction Yuzumaki Nagato caused in that last video. After all, this time, there is no one who could resurrect them. Damn it. What's with this monster? Senju Tsunade stared at the image. Half of its head was already thousands of meters. If all of its body came through, wouldn't it be tens of thousands of meters? She really couldn't figure out how such a big creature was in the shinobi world. Not to mention the tailed beasts, even the demonic statue of the outer path, couldn't compare to this monster. Senju Tsunade's face was pensive, but she finally spoke, All the cages here, I leave this place to you. Then, Senju Tsunade gave an order, Kanoha Shinobi. Come back to Kanoha with me. Whoosh. With that, Senju Tsunade instantly moved and headed towards Kanoha's direction in a frenzy. Tsunade was extremely fast, but two figures burning green steam were faster than her. Die. Die. Seeing the two, Senju Tsunade's face was instantly glad, and she quickly called the two to a halt. She almost forgot these two soldiers. Guy, let the fourth Rekage's flying thunder formation team send you back. Hearing Tsunade's voice, the two figures came to a halt, and a long gully suddenly appeared at their feet. Hold on, Hulkage. The surprised voice of the third Tsuchikage sounded. He asked Tsunade with profound meaning. That guy, that's Shimura Danzo, right? Danzo. Senju Tsunade was stunned by Inoki's question. She then looked at the screen as if she remembered something. At first glance, Senju Tsunade suddenly froze when he saw the scene on the screen. She saw a figure in a black robe, standing on the tallest building, the Hokage's office. He was looking up at the giant beast above him, whose body continued to protrude from the void, lifting up a fierce scale that made his robe fiercely flutter. At the moment, he looked awe-inspiring. He who wants to fight the beast. How could he be that monster's opponent? Does he have a death wish? Wait, look, are those shinobi in masks are evacuating Kanoha's civilians? Is that Kanoha's route? Watching Shimura Danzo look like he was taking on the monster single-handedly and then looking behind him at those Anbu darting to evacuate Kanoha residents, the shinobi crowd was stunned. No way. Is this still the Danzo I know? The one who stabbed Sasuke with a kunai? No way, there's no way that could be that Shimura Danzo. When Kayubi invaded Kanoha, he didn't show up, nor did he when Akatsuki invaded Kanoha. Why is he showing up now? But, he is Kanoha's root. No one knew who said that last sentence. 
Everyone suddenly went silent. Fushina, let me go. Somewhere in the land of Shinobi, the fourth Hokage, Namika's Minato stared at the screen. The impure world reincarnated eyes strangely turned red. Yuzumaki Kushina faintly glanced at Namika's Minato and said nothing. Until, a moment later, Yuzumaki Kushina let out a soft sigh, shook her head, and walked away. Her hands waved, and his seals were undone. The sealing technique on Senju Taburama, you can solve it yourself. Seeing Yuzumaki Kashina's actions, Namika's Minato was instantly overjoyed. He was about to invite Kashina to go back with him to save Kanoha, only to find that Kashina had disappeared from sight. Namika's Minato's eyes became dim. With his hands forming seals, his figure instantly disappeared and reappeared, already in front of Senju Taburama. Second Hokage Sama. Namika's Minato broke the sealing technique on the other person, and without having to say anything at all, in the next moment, the two figures simply disappeared. Once again, they had already appeared in Kanoha. Roar. A loud sound came from above their heads, causing their expressions to change instantly. The two people chose a direction to go, and their figures flickered away. In the next moment, the two reappeared at Shimmer Danzo's sides. Danzo, well done. Senju Taburama looked at Shimmer Danzo with satisfaction. This was the first time he saw Shimmer Danzo after he was summoned with the Impure World Reincarnation. Unexpectedly, over the years, the other party had grown to this point. Supporting Kanahagakur, facing this unknown beast. Kanoha, with the support of these kinds of people who carry their destiny on their backs, could grow stronger. The others are too slow. You guys, go save the people. Shimmer Danzo didn't look at the two people that arrived. His feelings remained unchanged. Senju Taburama and Namika's Minato looked at each other, and then their figures jumped down. Their figures kept flickering. They were clearly using the Flying Thunder God technique to save people. Roar above, as if noticing Danzo's presence, the monster let out a loud roar. Its fishy breath instantly swept Shimmer Danzo away. Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. Shimmer Danzo looked at the giant beast in front of him and coldly formed seals, followed by the Multiple Shadow Clone Technique seal. Instantly, three Shimmer Danzos appeared behind him. Wind Release. Vacuum Blade. Wind Release. Vacuum Serial Waves. Wind Release. Vacuum Sphere. Wind Release. Vacuum Great Sphere. A series of four Wind Release Jutsu were made. People could see him take a deep breath, and with light exhale from his mouth, a gale was instantly spat out. They shot towards the beast's head. That's not all. Shimmer Danzo was surrounded by strong winds, and the beast's fishy breath blew straight back. Evil beast. With me here, don't think you can run rampant in my Kanoha. Shimmer Danzo's domineering voice rang out and traveled down the live broadcast to the entire shinobi world. Does he think of himself as Kanoha's cage? The Kumo shinobi looked at Danzo's appearance and tutted. Just as he was about to say something else, Shimmer Danzo suddenly leaped high into the air and flew toward the mouth of the giant beast above. What's he doing? Is he crazy? He knows that he can't beat it, so he's going to commit suicide. No. Is he going to use that technique he used to seal half the bridge? Meanwhile, this technique sure enough, just when Senju Taburama recognized the other's technique, Shimmer Danzo had already shouted out the Jutsu's name. Tandem Explosive Tags. In the next moment, he saw Danzo with thousands of explosive tags that kept appearing around him, shooting into the monster's mouth. Whoosh. Shimmer Danzo instantly burrowed into the beast's mouth. Before the beast could react, a burst of muffled sound came out of its mouth. Boom, 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 boom. A series of muffled sounds rang out, and everyone in the shinobi world looked at Shimmer Danzo on the screen in horror. They've all seen the tandem explosive tags technique before. The terrifying power was still fresh in their minds. Surprisingly, in addition to Conan, who got it from the exam space, Kanoha Shimmer Danzo also knew this technique. Moreover, the other party was even more ruthless. He even used himself as the parent tag, and sent the tandem explosive tags directly into the monster's body. It was well known that whatever the creature, its interior had to be the softest and most fragile. Will he succeed? No way if he succeeds, this monster will fall after his death, and all Kanahagakur will be destroyed, right? Now, we can only hope that Namika's Minato and Senju Taburama are faster. Boom, 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 boom. The muffled sounds were still ringing in the beast's mouth, one after another. Everyone watched the screen with anticipation. They knew the gap between Shimmer Danzo and his opponent, but they still wanted to wait for a miracle. Maybe they just wanted to get special information about the monster through Shimmer Danzo's fight. 
Rekage, are the chakra cannons fully charged. The figure of the fifth Hokage, Senjutsunade, suddenly appeared in front of the fourth Rekage. Then, she said directly, give me the chakra cannons. Hearing Senjutsunade's words, the fourth Rekage's eyebrows suddenly rose up. Senjutsunade came to get the chakra cannons. He had thought of it, but the other party was so straightforward that he was a little charging has been completed. The fourth Rekage continued with narrowing his eyes. But with the heaviness of the chakra cannons, even if you transported it back to Kanoha, Kanoha would be long gone. No. Senjutsunade waved her hand and said, we are not going back. Let my guide carry the chakra cannons back to support Kanoha first. Sunade's eyes seemed cold. Dai's skulls were obvious to all, and with the chakra cannons that could smash the moon, she didn't believe that he couldn't kill this monster. You're not going back. The fourth rakage looked at the murderous look on Senjutsunade with a little doubt. The other party's stance didn't look like she was going back at all. Moreover, her murderous look was directed at Black Zetsu and Ichiha Bido. Seeing Senjutsunade's murderous look at the battlefield, the fourth rakage suddenly became suspicious. But after thinking about it, the fourth rakage still agreed to Senjutsunade's request. The chakra cannons are in the rear combat team. Killer B is there. Go get them. With your monstrous power, go and move it yourself. There's a seal there, and no one else can enter. Sunade went to transport the chakra cannons for the time being. Just when the live broadcast appeared, a pair of clean white eyes opened in the shinobi world. Suddenly, terrifying spatial fluctuations instantly erupted from these eyes. The surrounding space rippled, resembling the surface of a lake. It's just that when their gaze landed on the live broadcast screen, those eyes froze. This is the beast. How did it get here? Seeing the monster here, Atsutsuki Yurashiki's eyes snapped shut, and an indescribable sense of dread instantly enveloped him. As an existence who had fought the monster face to face, he knew too well how terrible the monster was. Not to mention the black-robed shinobi, if all the shinobi were added together, they still wouldn't be a match for that thing. It's terrifying. Such a terrifying existence wiped out the Atsutsuki clan that was able to conquer the stars. There seems to be only one of them. Atsutsuki Yurashiki suddenly narrowed his eyes and looked at the dark sky overhead. This was due to the shadow caused by the moon constantly falling. If it's just one, maybe I can try to kill it. The light of hatred appeared in Atsutsuki Yurashiki's eyes. Then, he stepped out of the shadows, revealing his horrifying appearance. At the moment, the left half of his body was completely normal, and at the right half of his body, his arm and thigh were in the process of regrowth. The crimson red arm wasn't as big as a baby's arm yet. At the moment, with his movements feebly trembling, it was obvious that he had suffered an extremely serious injury that hadn't completely healed. This was simply unimaginable for the Atsutsuki clansmen, who all had the ability to recover quickly. For them, an injury that lasted for years and still hadn't healed like that was unbelievable. It seems that I have to give that guy a hand. Atsutsuki Yurashiki slightly hesitated. Originally, he wasn't going to interfere in the shinobi world. Still, now that the monster known as the Leviathan had appeared in the shinobi world, he definitely couldn't do what he was doing before. Even if the whole shinobi world were destroyed, it would be worth it if they could kill this stray Leviathan, and get more information about these terrible creatures. Create a six paths, refine it into a chakra fruit, devour it, and this body wind would heal. That way, I can withstand the aftermath of the moon's impact. I don't believe that something like the moon falling won't kill it. Quickly clearing his mind, Atsusuki Yurashiki flew up and flew towards the battlefield between the allied shinobi forces and Black Setsu. The trunk of the god tree is still one tailed beast short of complete vitality. Relying on a guy created by Atsutsuki Kagai isn't enough. Then a pair of special Rinnegan appeared in his eyes. A bizarre circle of black lines, coupled with pitch black tomos. Impressively, it was the Tomo Rinnegan. The Tomo Rinnegan slightly fluctuated. A faint red aura escaped into the air. Atsusuki Yurashiki looked at the bustling crowd below, and his head gently turned as if searching for something. Found it. The Tomo Rinnegan slightly fluctuated again. Suddenly, on the ground, Killer B felt a nasty chill crawl up his spine. Before he could react, the next moment, a rampant surge of energy erupted in his body. This is Hachibi. What's going on? Why did he suddenly blow up? Senjutsunade had just asked the Flying Thunder Formation squad to send Mighty Guy and his father, who were carrying the chakra cannons away. The sudden outbreak of the Hachibi's Jinchuriki behind her surprised her. Then there was an instant look of panic on her face. Oh, no. The demonic statue of the outer path. 
Senjutsune turned her head to look at the demonic statue of the outer path's position. It was as if the statue had been provoked and was slowly crawling in their direction. Even if it was slow, with the size of the demonic statue of the outer path, the distance was short enough. For everyone in the shinobi world, every move of the statue carried great power. Especially after the outbreak of the Hachibi, the demonic statue of the outer path's movements had greatly changed. Ten giant wooden tails like windmills, frantically rotating, sweeping all the shinobi in front of it away. Killer B. What's going on? A blue ray of lightning whizzed by, stopping in front of Senjutsunade, revealing the figure of the fourth rakage. He was followed by Noki, Turumime, and others. Then, the people who were reborn through the impure world reincarnation showed up. All the strong shinobi, at the moment, were gloomily looking at the provoked Hachibi. Someone is messing with it. Anoki's suppressed voice sounded. His cold gaze landed on the eight tentacles of the Hachibi that were twisting around like crazy. Strike together, first subdue the Hachibi and take it out of this battlefield. Musama, you take others to stop the demonic statue. Make sure it doesn't get here before we finish. Anoki looks solemn. Right now, the Hachibi had been exposed. They absolutely couldn't let the demonic statue of the outer path devour it too. Otherwise, once the Jubi appeared, the Chihabito would become the Jubi's Jinchuriki, and transform into six paths of Bido. The consequences would be unthinkable. Moreover, the thought that the other party was under Black Zetsu's control, made Inoki's expression look even worse. After all, Black Zetsu was originally running around the shinobi world to revive Atsutsuki Kagaya. But now that Kagaya had come back, Black Zetsu's purpose was self-evident. Hmm. The second Suchikage, Mew, got up and directly flew towards the location of the demonic statue of the outer path. Let's go. The fourth Rekage looked calm. The tailed beast was a terrible monster for others, but for them, it wasn't enough. A mere Hachibi. If not for its Jinchuriki being Killer B, the fourth Rekage would tear it up by now. Originally, he didn't want these people to do anything to the Hachibi, but now he couldn't care so much. A ray of lightning was raging through him, and his aura was getting stronger step by step. This was already his most powerful state. He clenched his fists. He had to defeat the Hachibi as quickly as possible. Boom. A loud rumbling sound suddenly broke out, and the violent shock wave directly spread with the Hachibi as the center. The powerful wind pressure swept through, and people had to stop and cover their faces with their arms. This what's going on here. Look, the Hachibi. Not only the people who shouted, the fourth Rekich also looked at the battlefield, and his expression changed. Electricity flashed in his eyes. With this one look, his expression turned serious. No one knew what had just happened. At this moment, eight octopus-like tentacles were lying on the ground, similar to a dead fish. Eight long tentacles were randomly scattered on the ground. At this moment, the huge head was half missing. This kind of injury, for ordinary creatures, was already a mortal injury. However, the Hachibi himself was a chakra creature, and as long as there was chakra, he could recover. At the moment, even if he only had half a head, he was healing himself. What what's going on here? Anoki's voice carried a shudder. He couldn't understand what was happening to the Hachibi. Obviously, there was no attack. It was as if the air exploded and directly blew off half of the Hachibi's head. This how is that possible? He had lived for so long, so he knew that Ichihemidar and Senju Hashirama wouldn't be able to do this. Just as Inoki froze, Senju Tsunade's expression turned vigilant. Just when the Hachibi suddenly became violent, she was next to the Hachibi's Jinchuriki, Killer B, and didn't see any abnormality at all. Now the Hachibi was under attack. She thought, someone was attacking it in secret. It must be so. But who could it be? Senjutsunade's heart slightly sank. The other party made two moves without being noticed by her and the others, which showed that the other party's strength was far beyond herself and the others. What is that person up to? Senjutsunade coldly glanced around as if this could reveal the other party's location to her. While Tsunade was looking for the person, the Hachibi, which was originally weakly lying on the ground, suddenly flew up. It was clearly flying towards the demonic statue of the outer path. This is not good, the fourth Rekich exclaimed. In the next moment, his figure turned into a flash of lightning, instantly chasing the Hachibi. But he was too slow. Even if he was fast, when he was about to catch up with the Hachibi, a few huge chakra tentacles suddenly shot out from the faraway demonic statue of the outer path. Unexpectedly, the Hachibi was directly caught in mid-air, and immediately dragged towards the statue. Killer B. The fourth Rekich moved with a whoosh. 
His body suddenly turned into a thunderbolt, moving towards the demonic statue of the outer path again. No, it should already be called the Jupi at the moment. Boom. Lightning style armor. The furious fourth rakage appeared in front of the Jupi almost instantly, with lightning raging in his hand. The Jupi that had just opened another one of its eyes was viciously hit. Boom. Boom. Two explosions sounded in a row, violent waves of air swept through, and the space in front of the fourth rakage was instantly split. Black Setsu controlled a Chihabito's figure, and eerily appeared in front of him. Black Setsu. Seeing Black Setsu's appearance, the fourth rakage roared. His fist directly swung at Black Setsu. Boom. Black Setsu controlled a Chihabito to cross his arms in front of him, and suddenly collided with the fourth rakage's fist. Crack. Boom at Chihabito's arms were instantly broken. The sound of his bones shattering was clearly audible in the chaos of the battlefield. A tremendous force was transmitted, and a Chihabito's figure was instantly blown back. The second boom came from this, as a Chihabito's body was directly slammed into the Jubi behind him, and a loud crash sounded. Seeing that a Chihabito's body had fractured and a half of his face that wasn't controlled by Black Setsu was covered in blood, the fourth rakage coldly snorted. Today, even if Atsusuki Kagaya comes, it won't save you, Black Setsu. Haha. <laughs> Black Setsu's eerie laughter rang out, causing the fourth Reikijay's expression to change instantly. Then not only him but all the shinobi on the battlefield heard Black Setsu's murderous laughter. It's too late. Too late. Black Setsu grinned. No one saw him do anything, but the jubi behind him suddenly warped and converged on Ichihabito's body. Ichihabito's body seemed as if it was rapidly swallowed up by something. It faded to pure white, from the bottom of his feet to his legs, and then all the way up to his head. Not to mention, the injuries on his body, with his gradual transformation into a six paths, also rapidly healed. His momentum was getting stronger and stronger. Above his body, there were pure black balls. That's. Truth Seeker Orb. Six paths. Abido. The fourth rakage ale looked horrified at Abido's gradual transformation into six paths. His whole body instantly moved back. The thing he worried about most was finally born. In a few flickers, the fourth rakage appeared beside Sunade and the others. Right now, the expressions of several people also looked gloomy. Hahaha. <laughs> Black Setsu's maniacal laughter rang out again. The crowd looked at the scene and saw Six Paths Abido, holding a black scepter, standing in midair, half black and half white. Suddenly, several people's faces fiercely paled as they looked in horror at the sudden presence behind Six Paths Abido. It was a deformed man. No, it wasn't a man. He was wearing Atsutsuki robes. Another Atsutsuki. Before they knew the identity of the person who suddenly appeared, in the next moment, they watched the man slowly stretch out his remaining arm to the unsuspecting black Setsu and six paths Abido. Proof the arm instantly penetrated Abido's body, and blood flowed out of Abido's chest. Looking at his own beating heart in someone's hand with horror, black Setsu's laughter came to an abrupt end. What was happening at the allied shinobi forces wasn't known to others. At this moment, everyone in Kanoha looked at the sky with horror. There was a huge monster with half its body showing. Although it was only half of its body, its eyes had already exceeded Kanahagakur's size. Will will Danzo Danzo Sama succeed? Outside Kanahagakur, a yellow hue flashed. The Kanoha civilian was rescued by Namakis Minato. He wanted to call Danzo directly, but after thinking about what the other party was doing now, he still called him Danzo Sama in an awkward way. Although the Danzo scene on the video from the exam space was very words were hard to describe. But at this moment, no matter what the reason the other party had, he dared to stand in front of that monster, to make time for the second Hokage and fourth Hokage to rescue people. He was a hero. A hero of Kanoha. Danzo-sama is sure to succeed. Namaka's Minato showed a gentle smile on his face, causing a look of joy to appear on the face of the civilians who asked. I have to save others, please everyone, stay here. Saying that Namika's Minato's figure disappeared. Hearing Namika's Minato's statement, the Kanoha civilian was greatly relieved. Although he didn't know Namika's Minato very well as a person, and had only learned about him from the live broadcast of the exam space, but the other party's head was engraved on the Hokage rock. This person certainly wouldn't lie to him. Namika's Minato reappeared in Kanahagakur. His speed had been pushed to the limit, but he still felt that his movements were too slow. Shimura Danzo took explosive tags into the monster's mouth. This kind of suicide attack couldn't directly kill the monster. 
Namika's Minato didn't know Danzo's fighting style and ability, so he thought Danzo was launching a suicide attack. At this moment, the rumbling sound in the monster's mouth had almost stopped, but the monster seemed fine. Swish. Shimura Danzo's figure once again reappeared at the top of Kanoha's Hokage's office. There's no effect. Shimura Danzo's when I looked at the hideous and terrifying beast in front of him, his gaze slightly sunk. He thought that the inside of this monster, like other creatures, was soft and could easily be destroyed. But, who knew, the A-level forbidden tandem explosive tags technique couldn't destroy the inner wall of its mouth. Danzo speculated that if he continued to go deeper, he might encounter soft breakable inner walls, but he no longer dared. Because of the time limit of the Aizanagi technique, if he died in the monster's mouth, he could still stand here. If he went into the monster's belly, the resurrected self would be inside the monster. That way, he would fall into the closed loop of death. Aizanagi couldn't save him. Shimura Danzo's gaze was slightly strained as he had one of the six Shuringen in his hand close. He raised one eye and looked at the monster above. From this angle, he could see each other party's massive pupils. Yes. Shimura Danzo's heart fluttered, and he quickly removed the bandage from his eye. This Manjekyo, Ichiha Shisui's eye, possessed a jutsu called Kodamatsukami. The Kodamatsukami could modify other people's consciousness. Shimura Danzo's eyes slightly narrowed, and with what he knew of Kodamatsukami, nothing could stop the Kodamatsukami's modification of one's consciousness. Kodamatsukami. Swish. As Shimura Danzo's words fell, the Manjekyo Shuringen in his eye immediately began to spin rapidly. The Manjekyo Shuringen's power kept converging, condensing into a wave that could not be seen by the naked eye, and projected towards the giant monster's pair of eyes. Swish. The traces of Manjekyo also appeared in the eyes of the giant beast. Did it work? Shimura Danzo looked at the huge Manjekyo pattern in the monster's eyes, and his face instantly glowed with joy. Really worked. If it succeeded, wouldn't this monster become a summoned beast that protects Kanahagakur? With it, not to mention other shinobi villages, even the entire shinobi world, wouldn't they be able to control everything? When the time comes, facing the huge credit of unifying the entire shinobi world, who else could stop me from becoming Hokage? The only cage in the whole shinobi world. When Shimura Danzo thought that he would be able to accomplish what even Hashirama and Madara couldn't do, his heart was on fire. Childish. A faint voice rang out. The allied shinobi forces looked at Atsutsuki Urashiki in horror, floating in the void. All of them were suddenly startled at his sudden words. It was surprising that, at this moment, there wasn't a heart in Atsutsuki Urashiki's hand, but a crimson peach-like fruit. Everyone who saw the horrible scene just now knew where this peach came from. He used a person to make a chakra fruit. That's right, the peach in Atsutsuki Urashiki's hand was formed from a chihabido. The six paths of Bido in his hands, at speed visible to the naked eye, turned into this chakra fruit. This this technique is horrible. Too evil. How could there be such a terrifying existence in the shinobi world? How dare a meager eye technique Atsutsuki Urashiki sadly shook his head. This eye technique, not to mention comparing it with the adults of the Atsutsuki clan, they were even inferior to those infants of the Atsutsuki clan, and he still wanted to control the Leviathan. If the Leviathan could be controlled so easily, why would the Atsutsuki clan end up in such a state? The Leviathan was called the taboo because, on the one hand, the other party's destructiveness to the world was irreversible, and on the other hand, its invincibility. Unless it was in the rules of the world, it was impossible to kill them completely. Otherwise, in a world like the shinobi world, even if you kill them, they may turn into something else even more terrifying. Like. A zombie Leviathan. Atsutsuki Urashiki glanced at the chakra fruit in his hand. This fruit was the lowest quality chakra fruit he had ever seen, and the least amount of chakra. It should restore my body. Atsutsuki Urashiki threw the crimson fruit into his mouth with some regret. That creature Kagaya created ran quite fast, and he was something an Atsutsuki clansman created. Atsutsuki Urashiki thought as he ignored Black Setsu's escape. This chakra fruit could also help him recover his body, and at the same time, restore a little strength. His throat rolled, and he directly swallowed it. The fruit broke down in his body, and a large amount of chakra directly flooded into his system. His right hand and right leg were growing at a speed visible to the naked eye, and in the blink of an eye, they had returned to normal. My body has recovered, but my strength is still a bit poor feeling the state of his body, Atsutsuki Urashiki's icy gaze looked at the crowd below. You're going to die next anyway, so you might as well help me regain my strength. 
After saying so, Atsutsuki Yurashiki's figure directly swooped down. Danzo Sama did it work. One by one, Kanoha Shinobi watched Danzo's live broadcast screen with faces full of disbelief and surprise. Although they didn't think that the Manjakyo Shuringen could subdue this monster, the Kodamatsukami was famous, so famous that they believed it could create miracles. Just as everyone was looking at him in anticipation, Shimura Danzo's body suddenly burst into black flames. This scene was too familiar. This is a matter of fire. Looking at the flames on Danzo's body, everyone was confused. Although they had never seen Kodamatsukami, how could there be a Matarasu in Kodamatsukami's use? Soon, Shimura Danzo's body was reduced to ashes by the black flames. A few moments later, Danzo's figure reappeared at the top of the tower, and on his arm, a scarlet Shuringen slowly closed. That's it on the other side, the Chiha clan's eyes were fixed on the Manjakyo pattern in the monster's eyes. Cold sweat it appeared on their faces. As an Ichiha, they naturally knew what was going on. The Manjakyo that appeared in the monster's eyes wasn't Danzo's Jutsu at all. A Matarasu. Those eyes are Ichiha Itachis. Damn it. When I saw this monster chasing after Sasuke, Ichiha Itachi was there. What the hell is going on? They couldn't imagine that there was such a terrible creature in the world that could deprive them of their eyes. Everybody, get ready to fight. A crisp voice sounded. The crowd looked for the source of the sound, only to see Uzumaki Kashina step forward with a face full of killing intent. Behind Kashina, Konin and the Akatsuki's group followed. Kashina. What are you going to do? The Chiha clan naturally knew about Uzumaki Kashina, and were stunned to see Kashina with an imposing and fierce look. Fight. Fight what? Right now, those in the allied shinobi forces had been held back by Atsutsuki Yurashiki, that had newly emerged and were even completely annihilated. So, they didn't need to fight at all. Could it be that Kashina is going to take advantage of the situation? Thinking so, the eyes of the group instantly lit up. They had just been beaten by the allied shinobi forces. Now, if they rushed out and took advantage of the opportunity to kill indiscriminately, they would surely cause them great losses. As if knowing the crowd's thoughts, Yuzumaki Kashina's suppressed gaze instantly swept over the crowd, then said, word for word, support the allied shinobi forces. What? Support them. Damn it although the group of people was hurling curses, they all knew the significance of this order. So, the group of people immediately rushed to the front lines. Meanwhile, Atsutsuki Yurashiki had beaten the allied shinobi forces into retreat. Although he hadn't fully recovered, his moves were filled with immense power. His seemingly random attacks required several Kajalavil people to join forces to resist. And the other party's eyes were even more peculiar. Three kinds of eyes were switching with each other, incomparably bizarre and unpredictable. This caused an immense headache for the group of shadow level powerhouses. It was good that the other party targeted them and didn't let the shinobi losses continue to grow. But everyone knew that if this situation were maintained for just a little while longer, they would all be defeated by him. Damn it. Sunade, when will my guy be back? The fourth Rekage's face was full of anger, but he was helpless. The opponent was too strong. Not to mention that his strength was far beyond six paths of Bido, he had a lot of means they were helpless against. Right now, Naruto and Sasuke hadn't grown up and couldn't deal with someone at the six paths level. Besides Might Guy, there was only the Chakra Cannons. But unfortunately, Mighty Guy had returned to Konoha with the Chakra Cannons. Shit. By the time he comes back, we would all be peaches. Senjutsunade resentfully said so. No one could have thought that someone had this sort of means. Ha, is this the so-called cages? It's nothing much. A rampant voice sounded, causing everyone's face to change and look up, only to see a giant white bird swooping in from above. Boom. The giant bird swooped down and slammed directly into Atsutsuki Yurashiki, who was about to attack. Instantly, the sky was full of fire, and explosions rang out. Dadar. The third Tsuchikage, Anoki, was happy. Then he saw the crowd behind Dadar, and his expression froze. Not only Dadar, but also the Akatsuki group, and even the shinobi of the Ichiha clan who owned Manjakyo Shuringen, rushed to their side. No, their target wasn't their own people, but Atsutsuki Yurashiki. This the fourth Reikich looked at these people in shock. He saw these people rushing up and thought that their target was themselves. However, he was stunned to find that these people actually targeted Atsutsuki Yurashiki. Are they supporting us? Don't freeze. How we fight is an internal matter for our shinobi world. Right now, kill him first. 
Yuzumaki Kashina's cold voice rang out, causing all the cages to look back and feel startled once again. At this moment, a terrifying chakra was lingering around Yuzumaki Kashina, and dozens of chakra chains were flying behind her, which looked extremely scary. Kashina. Senjutsunade's expression instantly changed. No wonder the second and fourth Hokage, who had the flying thunder god technique, were captured by Akatsuki. The small organization had resurrected Kashina. Kashina's mastery of seal techniques was similar to her own mastery of medical jutsu. It was more than just skilled or powerful, and they had reached an authority status. Okay well said, the shinobi world is our own shinobi world. The fourth Reikage shouted loudly and suddenly readied his pair of fists. He and the third Reikage looked at each other. Lightning release. Lariat. Lightning release. Lariat. With the same moves and the same aura, the two men took the lat and attacked Atsutsuki Yurashiki. Seeing the fourth Reikage taking the lead, the other figures suddenly burst up and rushed towards Atsutsuki Yurashiki. Meanwhile, in Kanahagakur. His attacks failed again and again one ineffective attack after another. Shimura Danzo's expression was full of frost. This monster was too strong. No matter what method he used, he couldn't injure it at all. In addition, Shimura Danzo successfully attracted the attention of the beast because of Kota Matsukami. Especially after Danzo's second resurrection. It seemed to arouse the interest of the monster, so every time he came back to life, the monster directly attacked him. Ramming, directly devouring, or drowning him in a Madarasu's fire. At the moment, after being targeted by the monster repeatedly, there was only one last Sharingan on Shimur Danzo's arm. Despair had appeared on his face. The slightest touch by the monster directly killed him, and Danzo's figure reappeared. In the next moment, an indescribable huge mouth directly swallowed him. Because of the size of that mouth, from a distance, it looked like it was biting not Shimura Danzo, but him and everything surrounding him. If Namika's Minato or Senju Taburama were in this space, they would be stunned to learn that this space had been completely sealed off. Not to mention space jutsu, but space-time jutsu would also be rendered ineffective in that area. It's all over. Danzo closed his eyes in despair, as the monster's terrifying roar reached his ears. Swish. Just when Danzo was about to die, a figure with blue steam shimmering all over suddenly appeared. Looking at the beast's mouth that was about to close, my guy, without saying a word, aimed the chakra cannons at the monster's throat. Boom. An earth-shattering noise rang out, followed by a dazzling blue light. Swish. The chakra compressed to its limit was like a lightsaber that instantly crossed countless distances, brushing Shimura Danzo's side, and ruthlessly penetrating the giant beast's mouth. Whoosh. The chakra cannons brought up a fierce scale that blew Shimura Danzo's ropes to a frenzy. What what is that? Shimura Danzo squinted his eyes and faintly looked at the blue light passing by. The blue light wasn't like his explosive tags, which failed destroying the monster's mouth. Instead, it directly melted the inner wall of the monster's mouth and stabbed through its head. In the mouth, a black and blue flesh and blood ruptured, a burst of foul odor emanated in all directions. Although the beam from the chakra cannons was very large compared to Shimura Danzo. But for that huge monster, it was just as big as a toothpick. No, it wasn't even as big as a toothpick. Roar it was the first time for the beast to get injured. The monster suddenly let out a loud roar. The horrible sound wave swept out, and unexpectedly exploded downwards. Boom 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 boom. The sound wave seemed to have substance and directly toppled all of Kanoha's houses. From a distance, it looked just like a Shinra Tensei was thrown down at the center of Kanoha. Shimura Danzo bore the brunt of the fierce wind spat out by the giant beast. The meat across his face was blown by the hurricane-like winds, shaking violently, and his robes were clinging to his body. This was all a slow explanation, but it all happened in an instant. At the moment, the beast still maintained his bite. In other words, Shimura Danzo was still trapped, and he couldn't escape the beast's seal. If I can't escape, then I won't escape. Shimura Danzo raised his arm to block the gale. He looked at the several meter deep hole in the monster's mouth with a fierce look on his face. He was in a bizarre state. The six Shuringen on his arm were gone, so at the moment, the Hashirama cells in his body were churning violently. If he were slightly inattentive, he would turn into a tree. Smiling softly, Shimura Danzo suddenly felt a little relieved. He didn't shout, as if he was saying a mundane thing. You monster, you didn't come early, or even late. You just had to come when all the Hokages weren't here. If the Hokage were here, I wouldn't even have to show up. This is good I'm the darkness of the shinobi of Kanoha, and I'll die for Kanoha. 
After Shumar Danzo said so, a sudden burst of icy light erupted in his eyes. Shumar Danzo looked at the monster's huge mouth, and he suddenly turned his head to look down at Kanoha. The once prosperous village was now in tatters. Even on the Hokage rock, which symbolized the rise and fall of Kanoha, was only left with a few incomplete heads at the moment. The surrounding Kanoha walls had collapsed into pieces, looking extremely dilapidated. Kanoha has been destroyed. Only half of the monster's body was out. The fall of it came here, the tens of thousands of meters long body would rampage in Kanoha. Kanoha is bound to be destroyed for good. Fortunately, he delayed the monster, so Namika's Minato and Senju Taburama's rescue went well. Most of Kanoha's civilians have been rescued, and the casualties caused so far are insignificant. Kanoha, you owe me a hookage position. Shimura Danzo let out a soft sigh. His obsession with the hookage position continued throughout his life, and in the end, he had to die for Kanoha before he could get the hookage's seat. I, Shimura Danzo, Kanoha's darkness of the shinobi. I won't allow you to act recklessly in my Kanoha. Shimura Danzo's body suddenly moved with a violent cry, not retreating but advancing. His body slightly flexed, jumped up, and rushed towards the monster's mouth. To be exact, it was towards the wound in the monster's mouth. On his right arm, the bandage unraveled by itself, and his hands quickly formed seals, would release. Roar the latter's words were interrupted by the beast's roar, followed by the beast's big mouth crashing to a close. Shimura Danzo, the Hokage office behind him, and even hundreds of meters around the Hokage's office, were swallowed up by the monster. Especially in the ground at the back, it directly created a huge crater. This 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 everyone looked at the monster's attack with horror. They were left speechless. A huge body, bizarre pupils, superb resistance to jutsu strikes, combined with this devouring ability that seemed to have spatial powers. How could we defeat this thing? In the shinobi world, a shinobi gawked at the live broadcast as his eyes looked disoriented. Especially some of the ninjas from Kumagakur. They knew that the powerful attack just now was the chakra cannons, but the chakra cannons that could destroy the moon only gave the other party a needle-sized injury. Wait. What was Shimura Danzo's last jutsu? Would release. What was he going to do? From what he said, it seems like he's going to kill himself. Dying and still remembering the Hokage's seat. Ha, Danzo remained in the village alone, and that counts as dying for Kanoha, right? No one knew who said it first, but for a while, the shinobi crowd sighed a little. Unexpectedly, in the end, Shimur Danzo died for Kanoha. Thought that. Look, that monster. Holy shit, Shimur Danzo is amazing. Hearing the shouts of the shinobi around them, everyone subconsciously looked at the live broadcast screen. With one glance, everyone was astonished. On screen, the monster's huge head, which was thousands of meters big, seemed to be covered with a green bush, and it was green and eerie. Towering trees emerged from its head, and its roots were firmly rooted in its skull. Not only that, the beast's mouth had been clogged with a lot of wood release roots, which made it struggle to open its mouth. It couldn't even roar. This is in the exam space, Sanju Hashirama's eyes lit up slightly. He was a specialist in wood release jutsu, so naturally, when he saw Danzo's marvelous technique, he immediately recognized it. This technique imitated his wood release, advent of a world of flowering trees, but it was different from his advent of a world of flowering trees. Although the scope was much smaller, the other party's jutsu could actually absorb the vitality of this monster. Although the effect was minimal, and even, in Senju Hashirama's opinion, this vitality absorbing technique was still a little immature. Still, it was undeniable that as long as the jutsu could last a bit longer, Shimura Danzo's outburst near death was bound to kill the monster. Not only did Senju Hashirama understand it, but some people in the shinobi world also saw the brilliance and burst into gasps. These big trees their roots are in the monster's mouth, and their crowns are at the top of the monster's head. Wouldn't its brain be stuffed with tree trunks by now? It's not even dying yet. Oh my god. Danzo's technique relies on persistence. These trees absorb the monster's vitality, which has been integrated within the monster. Even if the crown above its head and the roots in its mouth are destroyed, it will grow again, through the vitality of the monster. By continuously absorbing the monster's vitality, it will eventually kill the monster. This this was Danzo always this powerful. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, is the darkness of the shinobi this powerful? Roar a loud noise seemed to tear the sky apart, and a huge sound wave swept through. The roots in the monster's mouth broke and splintered with a bang. Then, they quickly regenerated, filling its mouth. The sound waves swept through. 
Kanahagakar, below, instantly capsized like a small boat in the sea. The entire Kanahagakar, under the Leviathan's roar, was instantly destroyed. As if to vent its fury, the beast instantly from a portal to pull out its tail and viciously smashed Kanoha. Boom. Kanoha was directly squashed by the giant tail, then it lifted its own tail and slapped down again viciously. Boom. With another loud bang, the beast lifted its tail, and all of Kanoha had been completely flattened. This. This monster is angry. It looks like Danzo really injured it. In the shinobi world, a group of people looked at Kanoha's destruction without any joy on their faces, but at this moment, when they saw that the monster was badly injured, everyone was happy. Does it mean that wood releases its weakness? The buzz below reached Atsutsuki Urashiki's ears, which slowed down Atsutsuki Urashiki's attacks. Wood release could kill the taboo. Atsutsuki Urashiki's hands were constantly moving, but he was dividing his attention between watching the live broadcast over her and thinking about the feasibility of wood release, being able to kill a horrible creature like the taboo. He saw the battle between Shimura Danzo and the taboo. He had to say, this Shimura Danzo had some talent. Using the damage caused by the chakra cannons to the mouth of the Leviathan and applying jutsu inside the Leviathan. The most brilliant thing about this was that the jutsu Shimura Danzo applied was not a straightforward destructive jutsu. If only a destructive jutsu were used, at most, the wound on the Leviathan would be torn open, and its recovery ability was even more terrifying than that of the Atsutsuki clan. Maybe Shimura Danzo would just die, and the Leviathan would recover as before. It was precisely this harmless jutsu or a jutsu that wasn't directly harmful that had caused greater troubles for the Leviathan. Absorbing the other party's blood like a mosquito, constantly absorbing the other party's vitality, and relying on the other party's vitality. As long as the other party didn't die, this technique wouldn't disappear. Strictly speaking, this wasn't jutsu at all, but more like a curse seal. Atsutsuki Urashiki's eyes slightly moved, and his attack stopped at the next moment. He glanced at the mess below. Atsutsuki Urashiki's eyes slightly narrowed, and in the next moment, his vast sensory ability instantly spread out in all directions, with him as the center of the circle. The few cages were stunned by the sudden changes in front of them. They were a little confused as to why he suddenly stopped attacking. But fortunately, it was a good time for them to recover the chakra they had used up while fighting him. Found it. Atsutsuki Urashiki's eyes snapped open. In the next moment, the five fingers of his left hand formed a claw-like shape. Come here. As Atsutsuki Urashiki landed, the ground near his feet instantly broke open, and a pure white figure was directly captured from beneath the ground. Is that... White Zetsu? Senjutsunade frowned. She didn't know what this guy was going to do with the white Zetsu. Isn't this the special white Zetsu beside black Zetsu? The fourth Reikage's eyebrows rose. He remembered this white Zetsu. It was a special white Zetsu who followed Black Zetsu. He naturally wouldn't dare to underestimate him. Especially at this moment, the other party was captured by Atsutsuki Urashiki. If there was nothing strange about it, he didn't believe it could beat the third Reikage. You would release is very strong. Atsutsuki Urashiki's pale blue eyes look at the white Zetsu, Tobi, in his hands. Somehow, his eyes have turned into tense again. Toby looked at the horrible guy in front of him, thinking about a way to escape in his heart. In front of this guy, Toby had a feeling of being completely overpowered. Although he didn't know what this guy wanted him to do, being captured by him was definitely not a good thing. As if he saw through Toby's thinking, Atsutsuki Urashiki's lips and feet slightly lifted. He raised his arm, and in the next moment, many cage-level powerhouses were horrified to find that everyone had just moved from the battlefield. This place Kanahagakur. This this. The crowd looked up in horror, looking at the behemoth tens of thousands of feet above their heads. Only at this moment, they really felt the terrifying nature of this monster. This oppressive feeling. Was simply suffocating. Go ahead. Atsusuki Urashiki made a flinging motion in midair. Instantly, Toby, who was restrained in front of him, flew straight out. The direction of his flight was clearly the head of the giant beast. Shit 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 shit, Atsutsuki, wait till I kill you. Toby was cursing as he flew off. Looking at the horrible beast in front of him, not daring to hesitate, directly formed seals of his most powerful move. Wood release. Summit enlightenment. Boom. After a loud bang, a huge Buddha statue with countless giant arms, instantly formed in midair. Boom. Boom. The thousand meter tall wooden Buddha statue fell from midair and smashed directly on top of the Leviathan's head. 
The loud burst sounded again, causing everyone's ears to ring. But at the moment, no one was paying attention to their ears. All eyes were looking up above. There, Leviathan's head was suddenly hit by a heavy wooden statue, and its whole body instantly plunged toward the ground like a falling kite. Roar feeling the weight on its head, the Leviathan roared loudly. The regenerated trees in its mouth splintered again. Then, its huge body rolled in mid-air and viciously fell toward the ground. Surprisingly, it was ready to use its own weight to directly crush everything on its back. Damn it. Toby saw the movement of the monster slightly below him, and he also directly launched a malicious attack. He controlled the countless giant hands to penetrate to the top of the monster's head. The huge statue bombarded the monster's head, and in the blink of an eye, the green trees on its head were directly destroyed. Not to mention that Toby directly controlled the wooden golem's head to release Jutsu with five different attributes, fire, thunder, water, earth, and wind, and aimed it towards the other party's head. In a single moment, Jutsu were flying like crazy, while Toby himself slid along the trunk of a tree above the Leviathan's head and went into its brain. This all happened in a flash. Seeing this white Zetsu series of terrifying attacks, in a single moment, for a while, everyone was stunned. That that's a white Zetsu. Senjutsu Nade looked at the white Zetsu in shock. She couldn't figure out why a white Zetsu could use her great-grandfather's Jutsu. And so strong too. The strength of the five types of jutsu that were casually released were all comparable to S-rank jutsu. That's is this still one of those creatures that can only be used as sacrifices offerings for the impure world reincarnation. The strength of this white zetsu is much stronger than that of Akatsuki, and he even has the potential to be comparable to Yuzumaki Nagato. Too strong. The five types of jutsu were used in succession, and even formed a fusion jutsu. Fortunately, the impure world reincarnated third Hokage was destroyed by Chihafugaku. Otherwise, if the professor saw it, he would have cried in pain. Just as everyone was stunned by the strength shown by Toby, the huge body of the Leviathan overhead came crashing down. Damn it. Run. The fourth Rakage took the lead in warning everyone. In the next moment, his figure flashed away like a thunderbolt, frantically leaping outward. At the same time, the crowd also reacted quickly, each using their own methods to move away. At this moment, the sky above the crowd was completely covered by the huge figure. No one could be seen, even on the live broadcast. All that could be seen were the huge scales that rapidly dropped. Damn it. In the exam space, Senju Hashirama and Yuzumaki Naruto spoke at the same time. Senju Hashirama saw that Kanoha, which he had built, was destroyed, and he could no longer keep the calmness he always had on his face. At this moment, his face was full of anger. Especially when he saw that only Danzo's wood release was able to injure the monster, the anger in his eyes was instantly transformed into hatred. At that moment, he just hated that he couldn't be there and kill the monster. Naruto had anger flashing in his eyes. Although he wasn't as angry as Senju Hashirama, he couldn't wait to appear in front of the monster, and use the seal in his body to seal off the other party. The huge toad told him that the seal in his body could even seal the progenitor of Chakra, Atsutsuki Kagaya, not to mention this strange fish. How dare you destroy Kanoha and the Hokage Rock. My face is going to be there in the future. Feeling that his elbow was gently pulled, Naruto subconsciously looked back and saw Hayuga Hinata, pitifully looking at him. Her pair of white eyes were full of tears. The helpless little expression instantly broke through Yuzumaki Naruto's defenses. A desire to protect and rage instantly burned in his heart. Don't worry, Hinata, I will take revenge for you. Yuzumaki Naruto's convincing voice gave Hinata some relief from the awful feeling in her heart. She clearly saw that, although most of Kanoha's people had been evacuated, there were still a few who couldn't run out of the monster's attack range. For the third question, I choose B. Atsutsuki Kagaya's icy voice rang out. Her delicate face was already covered with frost. She had suspected something, but she didn't expect it to be true. There were actually people from the Atsutsuki clan in the shinobi world. Moreover, the other party actually caught Tobi. However, Atsutsuki Kagaya knew Tobi had been following Black Setsu. He caught Tobi. Is Black Setsu also? The cold light flashed in Atsutsuki Kagaya's eyes. Now, she just wanted to finish the exam quickly, go back to the shinobi world, and see what happened to Black Setsu. Correct answer. Do you want to view the analysis? No. Without hesitation, Atsutsuki Kagaya directly spoke out. Then, the exam space paused for a few seconds. As if sensing that other people didn't have different answers, the fourth question directly appeared. Question 4. 
The reason why Atsutsuki Tanari destroyed the shinobi world is a. To stop the resurrection of Atsutsuki Kagaya. b. Revenge for Yuzumaki Naruto's confession towards Hayuga Hinata. c. Misunderstanding the will of his ancestor, Atsutsuki Hamura. The moment he saw the question, Atsutsuki Tanari's whole body froze. He knew the exam space too well. When this question came out, he knew which one to choose, regardless of the question. How is that possible? I misunderstood the will of my ancestors. Does this mean that I was too late to destroy the shinobi world? Or is the world created by the Sage of Six Paths isn't a mistake? He was confused. Atsusuki Tanari was instantly dumbfounded. He stared at the screen with fixed eyes. He was ready to study the options carefully, to study the question, and then pick one out. He didn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. If the world built by the Sage of Six Paths is correct, then why do wars keep breaking out? Wouldn't such a world be a mistake? Atsutsuki Tanari looked at the question, ready to study it from the beginning, but before he could start, a young and crisp voice rang out. I choose C. It was Yuzumaki Naruto who spoke. When Atsutsuki Kagaya heard the voice, she glanced at Yuzumaki Naruto curiously, but said nothing. After all, Yuzumaki Naruto was her grandson, strictly speaking. So, it wasn't surprising that he could choose the right answer. You choose. When he heard the choice made by Yuzumaki Naruto, Atsutsuki Tanari was momentarily dumbfounded. When he didn't pay attention, Naruto made a choice. This question was about me. Shouldn't I be the one to answer it? Correct answer. Do you want to view the analysis? The exam space directly responded, regardless of whether Atsutsuki Tanari was dumbfounded or not. Correct correct was I was I really mistaken. Atsutsuki Tanari was about to fall into self-doubt when a flash of lightning flashed through his mind. He was about to speak, but another voice was faster than him. No, the next question. Ichiha Madara's cold voice sounded, which made Atsutsuki Tanari's expression suddenly change. He didn't understand. Why are these people suddenly in a rush? One by one, they rush through everything. I just didn't pay attention. Damn it. They're just passing by everything without even listening to the analysis. Passing it just like that. They aren't even going to ask for my opinion. Me. Atsutsuki Tanari, the man who's controlling the moon and about to destroy the shinobi world. Are they really going to ignore me? Inexplicably, Atsutsuki Tanari's heart was filled with the desire to complain. He helplessly raised his head. Atsutsuki Tanari looked at the fifth question slowly appearing above them, and his eyes lit up. Question 5. Who stopped Atsutsuki Tanari? A. Yuzumaki Nagato. B. Chihemidar. C. Senju Hashirama. D. Yuzumaki Naruto. There's still a chance. Atsutsuki Tanari's eyes lit up instantly when he saw that the last question was related to himself. At that moment, his heart was starting to beat violently, even a little excitedly. There's still a chance. There's still a chance I missed the analysis just now. Now I have another chance. Atsutsuki Tanari believed that the analysis of this question would contain some information that he wanted. It's just that who could it be? Atsutsuki Tanari's eyes were slightly fixed. His line of sight quickly passed over the four answers. Just now, the speed of these people made him miss the analysis of the last question, and he couldn't figure out how he misunderstood the will of his ancestor. After all, instead of convincing him that the world created by the Sage of Six Paths was correct, it was better to convince him that it was too late for him to destroy the shinobi world. With a casual glance at Yuzumaki Naruto holding hands with Hayuga Hinata, Atsutsuki Tanari strengthened his own beliefs. It should have been earlier. Yuzumaki Nagato there's a slight possibility but with his strength, it was too naive of him to try to stop me. Ichiha Madara Senju Hashirama it's more likely to be these two, and they are much stronger than Yuzumaki Nagato. As for the fourth option. Atsutsuki Tanari squinted. Honestly, this option was the least possible one in his mind. After all, Yuzumaki Naruto's strength wasn't even considered by anyone right now. But it was precisely for this reason that he was too afraid to make a choice that easily. In the exam space, the correct answer was often the most unlikely one. Yuzumaki Naruto. Atsutsuki Tanari's eyes narrowed slightly as he looked at Yuzumaki Naruto with a pair of light blue eyes, as if he wanted to see through Yuzumaki Naruto. The exam space, while it suppressed his strength, didn't suppress Tensigen's ability to see through things. So at a glance, he saw the oil bead in Naruto. That. Atsutsuki Tanari's eyes suddenly narrowed even more. There was a beat in Yuzumaki Naruto that he couldn't see through. How is that possible? Atsutsuki Tanari's brow clustered. 
That beat actually gave him a vague feeling of something dangerous. Surely it doesn't mean that it's really him. Atsusuki Tanari suddenly felt glad. Fortunately, he didn't answer at random just now. Sure enough, the correct answer in the exam space is the most unlikely one. Thinking of that, Atsusuki Tanari suddenly opened his mouth for fear that his chance would be taken by others again. This question, I choose for this question, I choose A, Yuzumaki Nagato. Who? A voice rang out beside him, surprisingly two seconds faster than him, causing Atsutsuki Tanari's expression to turn fierce. His teeth clenched together. They were rubbing together as he squeezed out the question. Atsutsuki Tanari's gaze instantly and dangerously went to the person who spoke. Atsutsuki Tanari was furious when he saw that Senju Hashirama was the one who said that. I'll kill you. Hm? I'm already dead. Senju Hashirama frowned at Atsutsuki Tanari's murderous tone, and instantly answered back. He was upset now, so upset that he wanted to kill someone. He just wanted to finish the exam quickly, return to the shinobi world, and kill the monster, and the one Atsutsuki left in the shinobi world. In comparison, the two Atsutsuki on the moon were of lower priority in his mind. After all, a large number of Kanoha people were still too close to the monster. At that time, when the second and fourth Hokages rescued people, they didn't expect the situation would turn into what was happening right now, and some people were left too close to Kanahagakur. Coldly withdrawing his gaze, Senju Hashirama didn't continue to speak to Atsutsuki Tanari, and simply waited for the exam space to give its verdict. Although he wanted to finish it quickly, Senju Hashirama didn't randomly choose an answer, but a well-thought-out one. By now, he understood Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Madara's purpose. He wasn't a fool. All kinds of anomalies in the Fort Shinobi World War had long made him sniff out the true purpose of this Fort Shinobi World War. With the entire Shinobi world as a chessboard and all the Shinobi as pawns, they wanted to draw out the people hiding in the Shinobi world. Such a stroke of brilliance. Such an undercurrent. This was too familiar. If he didn't think that Ichihamidara's impure world reincarnation was a reincarnation of something Yuzumaki Nagato did, Senju Hashirama would have answered Ichihamidara for this question. I have to admit, their plan worked this time. Not only Atsutsuki Tanari, Atsutsuki Kagai, but also Atsutsuki Urashiki and the unknown monster. It looks like Yuzumaki Nagato himself didn't expect that his plan with Ichihamidara could lead to something so terrible, right? Thinking of that, Senju Hashirama looked at Ichiha Madara and sighed. As expected of Madara, this kind of plan, this kind of scheme, if not in the moon incident, and them coming to the moon, Senju Hashirama felt that it would be impossible for him to see through. With a flash in his mind, Senju Hashirama had it all figured out. Glancing at Atsutsuki Tanari, Senju Hashirama silently withdrew his eyes and looked at the screen above. You. You. Stupid. Foolish. Idiot. Looking at the other party who confidently answered with the wrong answer and still looking calm and collected, Atsutsuki Tanari was furious. But he had so little contact with people that, even if he was angry with Senju Hashirama, the only words he could use were these three. What made him even angrier was that the other party directly ignored him. He even did so blatantly. Damn it. Damn it this is crazy. Atsutsuki Tanari felt like he was going crazy. Atsutsuki Tanari almost exploded, especially at the thought that the other party caused him to miss the analysis, and the chance to know the truth twice in a row. I'll kill you. I'm going to kill you. At the same time, hearing Yuzumaki Nagato's name, Ichiha Madara suddenly looked at Yuzumaki Nagato beside him differently. Just now, the two people were still studying the sudden appearance of the Leviathan and Atsutsuki Urashiki in the shinobi world. They only reacted when they were suddenly named. Who knows? Yuzumaki Nagato shrugged his shoulders and looked at the huge monster on the other live broadcast screen, with a look of trepidation in his eyes. Fugaku's two sons are fucking talents. Noticing Yuzumaki Nagato's gaze, Ichiha Madara directly cursed. Ichiha Fugaku told them about Itachi and these whale-like creatures, so they both recognized the monster the moment they saw it. When they saw Ichiha Sasu carrying Ichiha Itachi away, how could they not know what had happened? So Ichiha Madara, at the moment, could only curse. Nagato couldn't blame him. Madara thought that Fugaku's two sons weren't good enough for the job, and they were getting worse and worse. The older one wanted to destroy the entire Chiha clan for the younger one, and now, the younger one wanted to destroy the entire shinobi world for the eldest one. Fuck. Ichiha Madara had decided. First, when Fugaku came back to life, he was going to beat him up. 
Secondly, he was going to confiscate the guy's unborn child and raise them correctly. It was too terrible. Ichihamadara was afraid that this little guy, who was still in Makoto's belly, would come out and destroy the whole universe. Oh, the answer came out. Ichihamadara raised an eyebrow and looked at the response given by the exam space above. Incorrect answer. The correct answer is D. Yuzumaki Naruto. This exam is over. Top examinees. Atsutsuki Kagaya and Yuzumaki Naruto. Reward Atsutsuki Kagaya. One chakra fruit. Reward Yuzumaki Naruto. World Dark and Saw Note. World Dark. Can be used to travel through the worlds. Used in conjunction with the World Gate. System. What's going on? Above the exams, there were two strange fruits in front of him. If Atsutsuki Kagaya were here, she would be surprised to find that these two fruits were exactly the same as the reward she received this time. Casually receiving two fruits from the system, Ryuji's expression did not ease in the slightest. He didn't understand why the exam space had to give Yuzumaki Naruto the world arc, and even specifically marked it for use by the sons of the world only. I'm the one who needs to use it. The son of the world. Others might not know. But I know. Isn't that the protagonist Yuzumaki Naruto why the fuck can he use it? The world gate was still in his hands. Without the world gate, Yuzumaki Naruto wouldn't be able to do anything. Die. Let them just all die together. Ryuji gritted his teeth and couldn't wait to bite off the semi-virtual screen in front of him, then crunch, chew, and swallow it in his stomach. Damn it. Damn it. Ryuji was furious, especially when he thought that the system had limited the usage rights directly to Yuzumaki Naruto. Only Yuzumaki Naruto could use it. He couldn't even grab the world arc through the exam space now. Kill but can't kill, snatch but can't snatch, I can only try to fool damn it, Yuzumaki Naruto is not easy to fool these days. For a moment, Ryuji looked down at Yuzumaki Naruto from above the exam space. At the exam space below, Ichiha Madara, Yuzumaki Nagato, and others were looking at the reward in front of Atsutsuki Kagaya and Yuzumaki Naruto in shock. Atsutsuki Kagaya was clutching a fruit that looked like a peach in her hand, and at the moment, she was completely dumbfounded. She never imagined that the reward given to her by the exam space this time was something so valuable and incredible. A chakra fruit. Isn't this an existence that needed a planet as nourishment and took decades to cultivate? The exam space gave it to me just like that this this even Atsutsuki Kagaya, at this moment, had some difficulty in hiding the excitement in her eyes. She had already swallowed a chakra fruit before. Even though the chakra had been divided up by the shinobi in the shinobi world, she still had plenty of chakra left in her. If she added this whole chakra fruit, why would she still need to be afraid of the Atsutsuki clan? Atsutsuki Kagaya violently thumped at the thought that she no longer had to hide and cower in fear in the shinobi world. As if unable to suppress the desire within, in the next moment, Atsutsuki Kagaya directly took a bit of the fruit. Atsutsuki Kagaya almost instantly swallowed up the fist-sized fruit. In the next moment, the place between her brows suddenly cracked open, and a red shuringen appeared on her forehead. Then a powerful force erupted from Atsutsuki Kagaya's body. The strong aura directly swept through the exam space, and even blew away the faint mist in the exam space. Is this the pressure of a progenitor of chakra? Feeling Atsutsuki Kagaya's power, Ichihamadara slightly frowned. Ichihamadara felt that he wouldn't even be able to make a move if he was enveloped in his opponent's aura. It's too strong. Ichihamadara narrowed his eyes at Yuzumaki Naruto to the side. He was a little worried that Yuzumaki Naruto would be hurt under this level of pressure. Hmm. Ichihamadara suddenly stared at Yuzumaki Naruto in disbelief. At this moment, in the space in front of Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata, there was a model of a ship, about half a meter in length, floating in the void. Just by its appearance, it looked like one of those old three-mast ships. However, what made Ichihamadara feel that it was odd, was its state at the moment. It was floating in front of Yuzumaki Naruto, as if it didn't belong to this world. At one moment, it would appear solid in front of Naruto. At another, it would only look like a shadow. It was as if it was constantly traveling between two worlds. What made Ichihamadara feel even more strange, was that Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata, who were behind the world arc, were curiously pointing at the world arc in front of them, as if they didn't feel the pressure from Atsutsuki Kagaya. The world arc a ship that can shuttle between two worlds. Yuzumaki Nagato murmured while looking at the ship in front of Yuzumaki Naruto, with some terrifying speculations hidden in his heart. The rewards of the exam space were somehow things that the examinees rewarded would urgently need. 
This was true of his original modern spirit and the Chihatachi's gate of time. Combined with the countdown to the destruction of the shinobi world that was mentioned in the exam space when Shimura Danzo's live broadcast was just opened, Yuzumaki Nagato was even more certain of his suspicions. On the fog around the exam space quickly receded, which instantly alerted the crowd. The exam space was going to dissipate. Swish. Everyone's figure flashed and reappeared on the moon. The moon was still falling. Floating in midair, Atsutsuki Kagaya glanced at the crowd. She waved her arm, and a dark crack appeared in the void in front of her. She glanced at Atsutsuki Tanari and went straight in. Nagato Inagi. A cheer sounded. Yuzumaki Naruto held the world arc in his left hand and Hinata in his right hand. He swiftly ran to Nagato. As he was going to say something, he was interrupted by Nagao. Naruto, can you control the world arc right now? Yuzumaki Nagato looked at Naruto expectantly. He had a vague feeling that Naruto was the son of the world in this world. Otherwise, it was impossible for the exam space to reward Naruto with the world arc directly. I can't navigate it. I have too little chakra to make it move. Yuzumaki Naruto scratched his head in embarrassment. When the exam space rewarded him with the arc, some additional memories of the arc appeared in his mind. For the world arc, Yuzumaki Naruto was like a captain who could control its direction. But if he wanted to make the world arc move, he needed a lot of chakra. Naruto had tried it, and with his current chakra, at best, he could make the world arc sway twice. Indeed. Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes lit up when he heard Yuzumaki Naruto's words. Would release. Wood Golem Jutsu. Senju Hashirama's low cry instantly rang out, followed by a giant tree, and instantly forming a huge giant golem. Without waiting for the crowd to react, the giant flew towards the distant horizon of the moon. What is he doing? Seeing Senju Hashirama's actions, Ichiha Madara instantly reacted. His body flickered and chazzed after Senju Hashirama. Ichiha Madara was very fast. As he kept running, a blue chakra form began to generate around him at a rapid pace. In the blink of an eye, the nearly 1,000 meter tall blue giant took shape around his body. Ha, they're fast. Disdainfully glancing at the direction where Senju Hashirama disappeared to, Atsutsuki Tanari coldly withdrew his gaze. Feeling the moon under his feet, Atsutsuki Tanari's eyebrows clustered. Right now, his heart was in a mess. The fourth and fifth questions shook his original beliefs. He was a little confused as to what was going on with the exam space, saying that he had misunderstood his ancestor's true intent. Did his ancestor really think the world created by the Sage of Six Paths was correct? Could it be that the Atsutsuki branch family really misunderstood the will of their ancestor? Wouldn't that mean that the thousands of years of struggles were all meaningless? No? I can't destroy the shinobi world until I figure everything out. Atsutsuki Tanari instantly made a decision, and a brilliant blue light burst out of his eyes. A huge force surged around the rapidly falling moon, trying to drag the moon back to its original orbit. He had to figure out what the fourth question really meant. Stop. With Atsutsuki Tanari's command, the rapidly falling moon slowed down. The traction force from the rapid halt affected the moon, and instantly caused more serious damage to the moon's surface. A lot of dust flew up, and part of the moon's surface collapsed. From a distance, at the moment, the moon was like a small round ball, covered in dust. Yuzumaki Nagato, on the surface of the moon, was okay. He was stronger and simply offset the bizarre force, but Yuzumaki Naruto and Hinata beside him were not so lucky. Yuzumaki Naruto only felt his body wobble and subconsciously hugged Hayuga Hinata. Then he saw the sky overhead, the stars shifted and gradually slowed down. Boom. Suddenly, the moon shook, and then the speed that it just slowed down suddenly increased again. That speed was surprisingly even faster than before. Atsutsuki Tanari froze. In his perception, the moon, which had already been lifted back by him, was now shrouded by an unknown force. This force was much stronger than his. In front of this force, his strength was like a child's. Moreover, this force gave him a familiar feeling. This is Tensigen. How is this possible? Atsutsuki Tanari was stunned. He couldn't have imagined that there was a second pair of Tensigen amongst the people of the shinobi world besides his. The Tensigen is not the Rinnegan, and was as rare as the Tomo Rinnegan. Even Atsutsuki Kagaya doesn't have a Tensigen. The source of this ability it's the shinobi world. His eyes snapped open. The air in front of him suddenly exploded with a bang, followed by a flash of blue thunder. It's him. Almost instantly, Atsutsuki Tanari saw the person who wielded this ability. It's that guy named Atsutsuki Urashiki. 
Haha, <laughs> interesting. In the shinobi world, Atsutsuki Urashiki raised his head as if he felt something, and his lips slightly curled. Then with no obvious movements, the raging eye technique instantly surged toward the moon, pulling it downward. Boom. On the moon, a loud rumbling sounded. Atsutsuki Tanari's expression instantly changed. In the next moment, his whole body suddenly burned with blue chakra. Tense again. Chakra mode. A pure blue truth seeker orb condensed in front of Atsutsuki Tanari. In the next moment, Tanari directly flew into the air. In the blink of an eye, he was hovering at the sky above the moon's surface. Then, he tore open the space in front of him and went in. He wasn't Atsutsuki Kagaya, and had never eaten the chakra fruit. His strength wasn't enough for him to tear open space, and directly go to the shinobi world. He could only tear through space at close range. When he reappeared, he had teleported tens of thousands of meters into the void beyond the moon. As soon as he appeared, a terrifying pressure came from this starry sky. The chakra fluctuated in his body, directly counteracting this pressure. Atsutsuki Tanari aimed at the blue shinobi world in front of him, and directly jumped towards it. Whoosh. Atsutsuki Tanari's figure jumped down from the starry sky. Swish. Atsutsuki Tanari's body was burning with blue chakra. From a distance, it looked like there was a blue stream of fire in the sky. That's what is that. The anomaly in the sky was noticed by some people in the shinobi world, who were looking up at the moon. Naturally, they would notice Tanari's figure. However, because of the limit of normal people's eyes, they couldn't see Atsutsuki Tanari's movements too clearly. Look. On the live broadcast, there's actually another screen. No one knew who said it first. The shinobi crowd subconsciously looked and was suddenly shocked. Because of the disappearance of the exam space, the original live broadcast was only of the monster raging in Kanahagakur. But now, on that screen, there was an extra half screen. On the new screen, Atsutsuki Tanari, who was burning with blue chakra flames, was flying down. Around his body, there were several blue orbs. And in front of him, that huge aquamarine planet was none other than the shinobi world. Behind him, the moon was still falling. Boom. Atsutsuki Tanari crashed directly through the shinobi world's atmosphere. In its rapid fall, his body actually caused friction in the atmosphere around him. At the moment, Atsutsuki Tanari, like a burning meteor, was crashing to the surface of the shinobi world. At the same time, seeing this scene on the live broadcast, the people in the shinobi world were stunned. A man, surprisingly, jumped off the moon. That. That that is this still a human being? Is this still a shinobi? You're a fucking sage, right? Looking at Atsutsuki Tanari's figure on the screen, everyone in the shinobi world suddenly fell powerless. They really couldn't understand why there were so many incomprehensible things in the shinobi world all of a sudden. Under the shocked eyes of everyone in the shinobi world, Atsutsuki Tanari sensed Atsutsuki Urashiki's position. His body slightly moved, actually changing its trajectory in midair. In the next moment, like a blue meteor, he fell towards Kanahagakur. Ha, small tricks. Atsutsuki Tanari's silhouette flew through the sky and went towards Atsutsuki Urashiki's location. Urashiki once again revealed a cold smile on his face. His Tensugen eye technique, which was several times more powerful than Atsutsuki Tanari, pulled Tanari towards the Leviathan in the distance. Damn it. Almost as soon as Atsutsuki Urashiki made a move, Atsutsuki Tanari's expression violently changed. In his perception, at this moment, his body had been wrapped by a powerful force, and it tightly wrapped him like an eggshell. He was about to mobilize his own strength to resist, but in the next one, that powerful force suddenly turned into an attraction. Almost instantly, Atsutsuki Tanari's speed skyrocketed again. It was fast enough to leave a trail of light, cutting through the sky and smashing towards the head of the monster below. Boom boom. Atsutsuki Tanari's figure suddenly stopped. Standing with his feet in the sky as if he was standing on the ground. The violent shock caused the air to erupt with a violent roar. And the vibrations of this recoil were transmitted directly to the giant beast beneath him. In an instant, the entire body of the beast shuddered. Then the head and tail of the beast jolted with tremendous force and violently slammed onto the ground again. Atsutsuki Tanari settled midair and slowly lifted his head to look at Atsutsuki Urashiki, who was looking at him with a smirk in the distance. It's you. Atsutsuki Tanari's eyes fiercely glared. The chakra that boiled all over his body, as if it was burning, instantly trembled. Then, the several blue truth seeker orb in front of him began to distort and extend. In a short period of time, it formed a blue-colored longsword and slashed at Atsutsuki Urashiki from afar. 
Oh am the airy humming that came from the sword in his hand caused Atsutsuki Tenari to freeze. He looked at the tip of the sword, and his expression changed. At this moment, the sword was simply held in Atsutsuki Urashiki's hand. Rather, Atsutsuki Urashiki's middle finger and index finger were holding the sword securely. The tip of the sword was in his opponent's hand, and the sword was still eagerly buzzing. This Atsutsuki Tenari's eyes narrowed. At this moment, he finally really knew that the gap between them was too wide. Atsusuki Tenari tried to pull back the sword in his hand, only to find that he couldn't pull it back at all. You really are too weak. Atsusuki Yoshiki had a mocking smile on his face. Even his voice had taken on a peculiar tone. Haha. <laughs> Looking at Atsusuki Tenari's expression changing several times in succession, Atsusuki Yoshiki's fingers slowly turned. Suddenly, the sword began to stretch. Atsusuki Tenari also felt a growing force coming from his hand. Knowing that at some point boom. The sword broke. The entire sword shattered and erupted out in all directions. Then it rapidly flew back and made its way to Atsutsuki Tenari. Is this how you use your ability? Atsutsuki Urashiki curiously looked at the several truth seeker orb that resumed their flight around Atsutsuki Tenari, and grimaced in disgust. Such crude means. Swish. With that, Atsutsuki Yoshiki's eyes suddenly glowed with an eerie light, and an invisible force instantly pulled toward the whirling moon above, with him as the source. Boom. Pulled by Atsutsuki Yoshiki's power, the speed of the moon's descent instantly soared, causing even more damage to the moon's surface. On the moon. The strong wind whistled around him as Yuzumaki Nagato struggled to protect Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata behind him. With the current strength of the wind, without him, Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata would have been torn apart by the terrifying wind in no time. He just knew that, even for him, this kind of intense chakra consumption couldn't be sustained for too long. Where are Grandpa Toad and Grandma Toad? Hiding behind Yuzumaki Nagato, Yuzumaki Naruto looked around curiously, but he couldn't see anything. Except for the sand all over the sky, there was a loud rumbling noise. Yuzumaki Naruto couldn't find the three toads. Just as Yuzumaki Nagato struggled to maintain this fragile balance, a figure suddenly appeared in front of the trio. It's you. Yuzumaki Nagato's face twitched when he saw the visitor, and his eyes narrowed. Ah. Nagato and Nikki, do you know this person? Curiously looking at the person who suddenly appeared in front of them, Yuzumaki Naruto was somewhat surprised. He didn't expect Nagato and Nikki to meet someone he knew on the moon. Moreover, judging from the way the other party just suddenly appeared, Yuzumaki Naruto was sure that the other party should be powerful. If I save you, you have to promise me one thing. Ryuji directly ignored Yuzumaki Nagato, who was looking at him with tension, and turned his gaze to Yuzumaki Naruto. No Naruto. Before Yuzumaki Naruto spoke, Yuzumaki Nagato directly rejected Ryuji's proposal. Because of various changes in the shinobi world, Conan didn't have time to tell Yuzumaki Nagato about Ryuji, so Yuzumaki Nagato didn't know the details about Ryuji. He still had a bit of an impression on this subordinate from Omegakur. However, at this moment, meeting a genin of Omegakur on the moon was unbelievably weird to him. Moreover, when the other party appeared, he looked at Naruto with a clear purpose. Without even having to think twice, Nagato knew what the other party was going to do. Looking warily at Ryuji, Yuzumaki Nagato gestured with his eyes for Naruto to hold on tight to the world arc hovering in front of him. Naruto reacted and was about to make his move, but Ryuji moved much faster than him. Swish. Holding the world arc in his hand, Ryuji suddenly threw the arc toward the surface of the moon in front of them. Boom. With a loud sound, the world arc, which had grown countless times larger, appeared in front of the three. Wow Yuzumaki Naruto's exaggerated voice sounded, and beside him, Hayuga Hinata's pair of white eyes were also wide open, gawking at the sudden change in front of them. That little boat, that little boat that Naruto was holding in his arms, could become this big. If you don't want to die, just come up. Ryuji didn't bother looking at the three people who were dumbstruck. Originally, he didn't have access to the world arc, but after he threatened the system with his own death, the system finally gave him the method of controlling the world arc. In other words, now he and Yuzumaki Naruto both have the ability to control the world arc. However, because of the other party's existence, whether Yuzumaki Naruto or Ryuji, they needed the consent of the other person to use the world arc. Come on, let's go in. Looking at Ryuji, his figure flickered and who had already appeared on the world arc in the next moment, Yuzumaki Nagato gritted his teeth and followed him. 
He didn't know why the other party was here and how he could operate the world arc. But so far, the other party showed no malice. And most importantly, if they didn't get on board, even if they weren't torn apart by the increasingly strong winds of the moon, they would have been smashed to death by the powerful force of the moon when it collided with the shinobi world. Because the world arc blocked the raging winds in front of the three, they easily got on board the arc. Naruto's thoughts moved. The three figures flickered, and in the next moment, the three had appeared on the world arc. Wow, it's so big. Amazing. Yuzumaki Naruto looked at the massive object in front of him in shock. His whole body froze for a moment. It was especially true for Hayuga Hinata, who was beside him. At this moment, her delicate face was full of shock, and her mouth was wide open. Space-time, ninjutsu. Yuzumaki Nagato was stunned when he saw the mountains and rivers in the distance. He finally understood why this ship was called the World Ark. It's literal. It's really true. This ship is really a world. A complete world with a complete ecosystem, even with mountains and rivers. There's oxygen and light here. Even birds and animals. In the distance, Yuzumaki Nagato surprisingly spotted a small beast chasing a flying butterfly. The vastness couldn't be completely seen at a glance. It even has a sky. This. This. Yuzumaki Nagato didn't know what to say anymore. Even though he was a great leader in the shinobi world, even though he had seen a lot of things, at this moment, he was completely shocked by the scene in front of him. Swish. Suddenly, the scene in front of the three changed, and in the next moment, they appeared in a broad hall. In front of the hall, there was a bright screen. On the screen, there was the image of the moon falling at a terrifying pace as seen from outer space. This is this is a live broadcast. Yuzumaki Nagato looked at the screen in front of him with horror. He never dreamed that there was such a magical live broadcast in the shinobi world. Nagato and Iki, this is the control room. Naruto also looked around in awe. It was such a magical scene, but when he saw some things, information on how to use them unconsciously appeared in his mind. It was all magical. With that, Yuzumaki Naruto's hand moved. Then, a magical thing happened. On the pure white ground, three metal circles suddenly appeared, followed by three metal chairs that automatically moved towards Naruto and the others. What made the three feel that it was even more magical, was that the surface of the chairs could be adjusted according to the shape of each of their bodies, automatically adjusting to the most comfortable shape for each of them. Yuzumaki Naruto. Come here. Ryuji glanced at the amusing trio behind him, and directly controlled the chair under Yuzumaki Naruto, to pull Yuzumaki Naruto to his side. He pointed to the console, where all kinds of buttons and palm scanners were set. You should know what to do. Saying that he went to look at the other console beside them. Yuzumaki Naruto's eyes flashed with recollections, and he instantly understood what the buttons were for. It's where the captain initiates launch procedures. So Yuzumaki Naruto happily looked at Ryuji in front of him. He understood, this man was the vice captain given to him by the exam space. With them working together, it wouldn't require a large amount of chakra to activate the world arc briefly. Of course, if they used the world arc for a long time or even crossed worlds, they would still need a lot of chakra to support it. Haha. <laughs> Let's go. Yuzumaki Naruto let out a loud laugh and slapped his palm on the operating console. With the confirmation from Yuzumaki Naruto, colorful lights flashed in the bridge of the world arc, followed by the colorful lights on the whole world arc. Just as the lights and the flashing world arc gradually began to synchronize, the world arc suddenly burst into a dazzling brilliant glow. In the next moment, it directly disappeared from the surface of the moon. When they reappeared, they were already in space. Is that the moon and the shinobi world? In the bridge room of the world arc, Yuzumaki Nagato's expression looked horrified as he saw the two astronomical objects about to collide. Unexpectedly, we spent too much time in the exam space. Soon, the moon is about to collide with the shinobi world. If so, the shinobi world Yuzumaki Nagato's expression instantly turned gloomy. There was no doubt that the collision between the earth and the moon would result in the complete destruction of the moon. But the shinobi world would also be impacted, and the impact couldn't be ignored. The shinobi world. Will end. Not only Yuzumaki Nagato, but Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata, were also staring blankly at the screen in front of the console at the moment. A fist-sized ball of violently burning moon was crashing into a brilliant blue sphere, hundreds or thousands of times larger than it. Swish. Somewhere in the shinobi world, a void suddenly shattered, and Atsutsuki Kagaya's figure floated out of it. Her eyes slightly wavered as if she was looking for something, then her arm lifted, and a black chakra creature was sucked straight into her sleeve. Mother. 
Feeling the familiar scene, Black Zetsu looked at Atsutsuki Kagai in surprise. He thought the one who grabbed him was Atsutsuki Urashiki, but unexpectedly, it was his own mother. And mother's strength. Black Zetsu was instantly filled with ecstasy. He had just been so focused on escaping Atsutsuki Urashiki's attack, that he hadn't paid any attention to the exam questions in this exam space, let alone the rewards in the exam space. At first, he thought that the six paths had been snatched by Atsutsuki Urashiki, and his mother's strength couldn't be recovered. He even thought that his mother was in danger. However, she came back stronger than before. It seems to be the exam space. Almost instantly, Black Setsu figured everything out. Just as he opened his mouth to say something, he suddenly heard his mother say, it's too late. Then, before Black Setsu could react, Atsutsuki Kagaya took him and disappeared. Unexpectedly, in the next moment, they appeared outside of the shinobi battlefield. Not far away, the monster was tens of thousands of meters away. Further away, Atsutsuki Tanari and Atsutsuki Urashiki were fighting. The battle wasn't intense. Even Black Zetsu could see that Atsutsuki Urashiki was toying with Atsutsuki Tanari. At the moment, Atsutsuki Tanari was panting, while Atsutsuki Urashiki was still taking it easy. Further away, those high-level leaders of the allied shinobi forces, or the shinobi brought by Atsutsuki Urashiki, were looking at the clouds overhead in horror. It's too late. At the moment Atsutsuki Kagaya appeared, Atsutsuki Urashiki noticed her and instantly swept Atsutsuki Tanari away with a single blow. After bullying him, he sent him flying. Atsutsuki Urashiki coldly looked at Atsutsuki Kagaya, who was prepared and didn't interfere. He just said. Instead of worrying about the shinobi of this place, it's better to worry about whether this moon strike would kill us all. We are what's left of the Atsutsuki clan. We can't even hurt a single scale on the Leviathan. I, Atsutsuki Urashiki will kill this already wounded Leviathan with a blow that can even destroy the entire shinobi world. With that, Atsutsuki Urashiki raised his hands high. As if he was crazy, he slammed them down hard. Boom a loud sound exploded above the shinobi world, and the roaring moon above seemed to accelerate, smashing towards the leviathan that was slowly floating up. Damn it. Damn it. Is the shinobi world going to be destroyed? Everyone in the shinobi world was horrified as they saw the shadows, tens of thousands of meters overhead. Not to mention the ordinary shinobi that turned pale from fright. Even Senju Tsunade, A, Inoki and others were left speechless. It's terrible. They survived at Shihemidara's Tengai Shinsei, but how could they survive that massive moon right now? We're all going to die. Turumi may purse her lips, and her expression was unspeakably gloomy. Originally, she told the shinobi of Karigakur that her marriage could be delayed, but the war couldn't be delayed. But now Turumi may slowly closed her eyes, then opened them again with some expectations, but she never saw the green figure again. Not only Turumi may, but Chiyo also closed her eyes at this moment. Only those shinobi who were resurrected with the impure world reincarnation, were staring at the fierce winds brought on by the falling moon. Their eyes unblinking, staring at the moon coming down above them. Boom a loud explosion, as if the earth was shattering, rang out. As seen from space, a huge mushroom cloud rose up in the middle of the shinobi world. Boom. In the shinobi world, when the moon crashed down, the huge beast was directly suppressed under the moon. The tremendous power passed through its body and directly onto the shinobi world, and suddenly, a rumbling sound rang out. Not to mention that with the great power constantly converging and gathering in the underground of the shinobi world, eventually converging to a point where it couldn't be absorbed by the shinobi world, in an instant, the ecosystem of the shinobi world was instantly destroyed. All the volcanoes erupted together, causing earthquakes and tsunamis. They all exploded together. The change was so terrible that for a while, most of the people in the shinobi world couldn't react. A small number of these people, who were unlucky, had been swept away by the sudden outbreak of disasters. In Kurigakur. The ninjas who stayed in the village, watched the monstrous waves around them with horror, and unimaginable fear bred in their hearts. Looking at the huge wave that came like a big river overturning, everyone's face showed a look of despair. In Uwagakur. Earth release. Quick, reinforce the houses and ground with earth release. Hearing the order, the shinobi left behind in Uwagakur moved and frantically used earth release jutsu to fill the cracks in the ground. Boom. When a group of shinobi gathered, the ground collapsed as if a devouring beast with a gaping mouth, swallowing the shinobi directly from the ground. Damn it. Seal it. Seal it. 
looking at the shinobi who were rapidly being swallowed by the rolling stream of mud. The shinobi in charge of the command had an incomparably awful expression. Those people, some of whom were his friends, some were his comrades, and were still laughing together a few minutes ago, in the blink of an eye, died without even leaving corpses. Seal the ground quickly. If these pits are connected, Iwagakur will be finished. Not only in Karigakur and Iwagakur, at this moment, but Sunagakur was also buried in a cloud of yellow sand. What do we do? What do we do? In Sunagakur, Tamari looked out through her window, but she couldn't see anything other than yellow sand. Tamari Kankura looked at Tamari worriedly, wanting to say something. The shinobi in the village had all gone out. Right now, the shinobi left behind in the village were almost all genin. Could anyone defend against this powerful jutsu-like sandstorm? Glancing out the window and listening to the crackling sound of sand and rocks hitting the house, for the first time, Kankuro felt the horrors of a natural disaster. In the face of this kind of natural disaster, the destructive power of their jutsu was simply insignificant. It wasn't at the same level at all. Even though Kankuro realized the horrors of natural disasters, how could he have ever imagined that this natural disaster wasn't just limited to their village, but the entire shinobi world? The whole shinobi world was all in the same state of shock. It's just that the civilians of the shinobi world were literally killed and injured, in comparison to the more resilient and adaptable shinobi. In this short moment, the total number of people in the shinobi world had dropped by at least two tenths. And this number was rapidly increasing. The shinobi world was finished. Hmm. At the center of the battlefield, Kanahagakur, Atsusuki Urashiki's figure appeared in the sky. He looked down differently. His face flushed with confusion and uncertainty one after another. He wondered, with the reinforcement of my power, why didn't the moon directly shatter the shinobi world? It turns out that Atsutsuki Kagai used her power to protect the ground of the shinobi world with chakra. No wonder that at this moment, although the ground cracked, the moon hadn't completely smashed onto the ground, but rather embedded halfway in. Turning a blind eye to the cobweb-like cracks below, Atsusuki Yurashiki wielded his own perception and peered down into the wreckage of the moon. With an attack like the moon falling, even the entire shinobi world had been brought down with it, Atsusuki Yurashiki didn't believe that this already wounded leviathan could still survive. Such a terrifying attack, this was a first, even for Atsutsuki Yurashiki. Even if he came from the Atsutsuki clan in space, he never thought about using a moon to attack the enemy. Although such an attack was terrible, Atsutsuki Yurashiki knew the strength of this monster, so he wasn't being careless. Is its breathing weakening? The aura of death is strengthening. Sensing that the terrifying vitality of the Leviathan was rapidly disappearing, Atsutsuki Yurashiki's eyes suddenly lit up. It worked. I actually killed the taboo. Although it isn't completely dead, its powerful vitality is rapidly dissipating. At this rate, it will be completely dead in a few minutes. So, the leviathans aren't immortal. Pressing down the surprise on his face, Atsusuki Yurashiki began to gather a terrifying attack in his hands. Those leviathans were too bizarre. Unless the opponent were completely dead, he wouldn't dare to put down his guard. Take advantage of its weak state and kill it. With both hands raised high, the terrifying chakra was instantly condensed in both hands. It constantly compressed, and a crimson red chakra ball instantly appeared in his hands. Then, as if it was expanding, Atsutsuki Yurashiki's red chakra ball started to expand rapidly. 1 meter. 10 meters. 100 meters. Still growing. The huge attack continued to extend, and suddenly, it was close to 500 meters. This is... The fourth Hokage, Namika's Minato's in pure world reincarnated body slowly tightened. He looked at Atsutsuki Yurashiki in mid-air, with a serious expression. By now, he could see who Atsutsuki Yurashiki's real enemy was. It was that monster. Scattered clots of earth converge around him, turning into several figures. It was the second Hokage, second Suchikage, and others. At this moment, they were also looking at Atsutsuki Yurashiki's figure above them, with shocked faces. How could a shinobi really have this kind of attack? Swish. Swish. A space path broke open, and two figures appeared in front of Atsutsuki Yurashiki, looking at him coldly. It was Atsutsuki Tanari, and Atsutsuki Kagaya. You. Bastard. Atsutsuki Kagaya huffed as she looked at Atsutsuki Yurashiki. Her delicate cheeks were slightly trembling. When you look closely, not only her cheeks but her body was also trembling. At the corners of her mouth, there was a trace of blood. Is this broken world worth it? 
Seeing through Atsutsuki Kagaya's injuries with one glance, Atsutsuki Urashiki shook his head disdainfully. Golden Wheel. Reincarnation Explosion. Atsutsuki Tanari's low voice rang out. In the next moment, the Nine Truth Seeker orb in front of him elongated themselves. Looking from afar, Atsutsuki Tanari, at this moment, seemed to be holding a golden beam of light and slashed towards Atsutsuki Urashiki. Ah the corner of Atsutsuki Urashiki's mouth twitched, and his body vanished into the distance with a swoosh. Along with him, the powerful attack he had been brewing for a while disappeared. Hum. Seeing Atsutsuki Urashiki disappear, Atsutsuki Tanari was stunned that his Tensigen didn't catch his opponent's figure. Boom. Boom. Just as Atsutsuki Tanari froze, the Golden Wheel reincarnation explosion had slashed down from the vacant space. Originally, Atsutsuki was standing on the ruins of the moon. Now, Atsutsuki Tanari's attack fell short and cut directly towards the ruins. Swish. As if it were nothing, the ruins of the moon were instantly divided into two. It all happened very quickly, without any roar or explosions, just like a hot knife cutting through butter. In the blink of an eye, the moon was split into two. Ha 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 ha. Go to hell. Leviathan. Atsutsuki Urashiki's figure suddenly appeared and blasted the long brood attack directly at the moon below, where Tanari had sliced through. Boom. Loud noise, strong winds, and rubble instantly rolled up. Atsutsuki Urashiki's figure was directly pushed back due to the pressure caused by the explosion. Ha ha ha. Atsutsuki clan, I have avenged you. As his body rolled back like a big windmill, Atsutsuki Urashiki's maniacal laughter rang out. At the moment, he didn't care about his own body. All his senses were focused on the explosion, the chaotic and violent chakra rampaging, and the rapidly disappearing aura of life. Almost there. Almost there. Feeling the increasingly fragile aura of life, Atsutsuki Urashiki's eyes were getting brighter and brighter. Boom. With his right hand clenched in a fist, he gently struck the air, and in the next moment, his body directly stopped in midair. P.U.F.F.A. sound, like a bubble bursting, rang in Atsutsuki Urashiki's ears. It was so faint that even Kagaya couldn't hear it, but it caused Atsutsuki Urashiki's eyes to instantly blossom with dazzling light. Dead. Its aura of life is completely gone. Hahaha. <laughs> Success. Atsutsuki Urashiki looked excitedly at the slowly dissipating explosion cloud in the distance. The excitement on his face couldn't be concealed. I really killed a leviathan. Although with the help of some shinobi, although there was an element of luck, although at the cost of a world but, as long as I can kill this leviathan, it's all worth it. As long as I study its body, maybe I can find their weakness, and then kill them all. An icy gleam flashed in Atsutsuki Urashiki's eyes. Suddenly, his eyebrows tightly clustered. Under the ruins of the moon, the leviathan's aura of life had completely disappeared, but the aura of death was getting stronger and stronger. Something's wrong. Not only Atsutsuki Urashiki, but Atsutsuki Tanari and Atsutsuki Kagai also noticed the anomaly. Below the ruins of the moon, the originally dead monster was undergoing an unimaginable mutation. Damn. It's not dead yet. Atsutsuki Urashiki caught a glimpse of Atsutsuki Kagai, and was about to tear an opening in the void directly, to run far away. Kagai. You and I are the last two Atsutsuki. Please stay alive. After saying that, Atsutsuki Urashiki's majestic chakra instantly surged towards the space between dimensions. Hmm. The solid feeling coming from the space caused Atsutsuki Urashiki to freeze, and his expression dramatically changed. The space here is confined. Roar. A suppressed roar rang out. Then the ground exploded below the surface, and countless rocks and clods of dirt burst into the sky. The three Atsutsuki raised their chakra barriers and bounced the rocks that crashed into them away. Atsutsuki Urashiki's eyes had somehow changed into Tomo Rinnegan, which glowed red and looked down. It crossed countless obstacles, penetrated the thick dust, and landed on the roaring and struggling figure. This is seeing the state of Leviathan below, Atsutsuki Urashiki's scalp suddenly felt numb. At that moment, this Leviathan had lost its life. All that supported its movements was a massive aura of death. Feeling the vast and horrible aura of death, even Atsutsuki Urashiki's heart thumped in fear. Roar roar. With another grotesque roar, the movements below were enhanced once again. In the next moment, the entire ground was rumbling and rapidly began to surge up. It was as if something was breaking through the ground. It's coming out. Atsutsuki Tanari's eyes abruptly narrowed. Without any obvious movements, the Three Truth Seeker orb in front of him, blasted at the giant beast that had just popped its head out. Snap. Snap. 
Snap. A series of three sharp blades penetrated its flesh. Atsusuki Teneri looked at the three one-meter holes he had made in the monster's body in confusion. Surprisingly they got in. In the next moment, the confusion on Atsutsuki Teneri's face suddenly turned to horror. The three truth seeker orbs. I can't sense them anymore. How how is that possible? Those are truth seeker orbs. The indestructible truth seeker orb. Unexpectedly, they disappeared. It can corrupt the truth seeker orb. A young but very old tone voice sounded. Atsutsuki Teneri looked round, and his pupils suddenly shrank. It should have Sasuke. No, not Sasuke. Someone is controlling Ichiha Sasuke's body. Sage of Six Paths. Atsutsuki Teneri squinted. He never thought that the Sage of Six Paths would be alive. Even more unexpectedly, the Sage of Six Paths had the audacity to show up at this time. Atsutsuki Kagaya is here. Roar. Before Atsutsuki Teneri could continue to think, a terrible roar rang out, and then a horrible figure flew up directly from below, winding towards the sky. It was at this moment that Atsutsuki Teneri got a good look at the state of the Leviathan. The whole body exuded a dark aura. The dark aura even caused the space to distort faintly. Its scaled body, flesh, and blood seemed to melt, dripping down toward the ground. This flesh and blood seemed to have a terrifying corrosive effect. It actually eroded a black hole in the ground with a sizzling sound. Suddenly, Atsutsuki Urashiki's nose twitched, and a strong stench suddenly swept over him. Atsutsuki Urashiki subconsciously looked. With this glance, his face was full of fright. His arm was somehow stained with a drop of black liquid. What's more frightening, his right arm was already dark, and his flesh began to rot and droop. Atsutsuki Urashiki's face turned cold. In the next moment, his left palm slashed down, and his right arm was directly cut off. As he watched his right arm fall through the air and disappear in mid-air in rapid decay. Atsutsuki Urashiki looked in horror at the zombie leviathan that was still floating overhead. With the other party's tens of thousands of meters white body, the ground below seemed to be showered with black rain. Fortunately, when the moon fell, everyone there was already dead, and no one saw the horrible scene before him. No, not no one. There were still some impure world reincarnators who, at this moment, were looking at their melting bodies with despair. This black rain was different. Wiping out not only their bodies but their souls as well. In other words, this time, they would really die. In the shinobi world, every single person that was watching this scene felt despair. It could contaminate the powerful Atsutsuki Urashiki's arm without a sound, and even force Atsutsuki Urashiki to sever his own arm. Such strength, such a monster in this devastated shinobi world, can anyone be its opponent? This shinobi world how long can it survive under this terrible monster? The taboo. Leviathans that swim through space, with a long lifespan, devouring and growing throughout its life. One body in two states. When it dies, it will turn into a zombie leviathan. Zombie leviathan. Burning its own flesh and blood to move, flesh and blood have a horrible corrosive ability that could contaminate even the soul. Huh. On the bridge of the world arc, Ryuji looked at the system prompt, and a surprised look appeared on Ryuji's face. Too cruel. When the leviathan died, it could turn into a zombie leviathan, and it could also contaminate the soul. That means six paths level people couldn't even touch it. Even impure world reincarnated people couldn't face it. This taboo has swallowed a Chihazumi and has the ability to teleport. It's opening a void to summon the other taboos. What? Looking at the system screen, Ryuji was stunned. Then quickly reacted and looked at Yuzumaki Naruto with a somewhat gloomy gaze. Now that the world arc had sailed and the world gate was in his hands, as long as Yuzumaki Naruto agreed, he could immediately travel to other worlds, and leave this dangerous shinobi world to fend for itself. But Yuzumaki Naruto a gloomy expression quickly appeared on Ryuji's face. Getting Yuzumaki Naruto to agree to leave now would be harder than killing this zombie leviathan, but there was no other way in no time. There's always hope. The shinobi are now facing a monster attack, and there's literally no possibility of saving it. Ryuji's words rang out quietly. Without waiting for the three people behind him to react, the world arc instantly brought up a visual feed of what the shinobi world was going through to the screen. In an instant, the screen of the control room was suddenly filled with images of the current situation of the shinobi world. The wind held, and the yellow sands overturned the buildings of Sunagakur, blowing the unresponsive people directly into the sky, without knowing where they would end up. Angry waves lapped at the shore, and all of Karigakur was instantly overtaken by the sea. Earthquakes, cracks on the ground, volcanic eruptions. Death. 
despair. The wails of the people of the shinobi world were everywhere. Even in Mount Maiboku, Ryuchi Cave, and other places where the summoned beasts live, there were horrible disasters. A giant clam was turned into a corpse, and a giant snake died miserably. The shinobi world has left its original track, no longer suitable for survival. The environment will continue to deteriorate. At the very least, in two years, the shinobi world will turn into a place where only people at the level of six paths could live. Ryuji's tone carried an ambiguous meaning. The current state of the shinobi world reminded him of something. Yuzumaki Naruto, when you got the world arc, the exam space should have told you that the world arc could go to other worlds a safe world. Hearing Ryuji's words, Yuzumaki Nagato no longer cared about the current shocking state of the shinobi world, but looked at Ryuji with a stunned expression. He finally knew what this man was up to. At this moment, in this control bridge, the situation was clear. Yuzumaki Nagato kept Naruto and Hinata behind him as he looked at Ryuji in fear. Although he hadn't seen his means yet, he knew that a lot of bizarre things were connected to him, so he had to be afraid. In particular, he was able to use the world arc given to Naruto by the exam space as well. Suddenly, Yuzumaki Nagato slightly frowned. If he could also use the world arc, why does he have to confirm it with Naruto first? Surely it doesn't mean that. I have the world gate. If you use it, we can go to the next world right now. No. Before Ryuji finished, Yuzumaki Naruto's crisp voice rang out. With the world arc, we can bring everyone from the shinobi world with us. Yuzumaki Naruto said as he looked at Ryuji with burning eyes. You have to get my approval to use the world arc, right? With corners of his mouth stirred up, Yuzumaki Naruto's face looked a little cunning. Seeing the look of plea in Naruto's face, Ryuji sighed. I knew it this stupid Naruto will definitely do that. Fortunately, he had prepared beforehand. Swish. The screen in the bridge cleared. In the next moment, it showed the appearance of the zombie leviathan. Under the dark rain of flesh, all living things were melting like candles. This seeing the image of a mountain melting, Naruto's eyes instantly froze, and a look of horror appeared on his face. At least half of the people in the shinobi world are dead now, and this zombie leviathan is burning its own flesh and blood, ready to open a space-time portal, to summon other leviathans to the shinobi world. You guys don't understand what this means, do you? Ryuji narrowed his eyes and looked at the three. He wanted to see how the three would look when they knew that the shinobi world was doomed to be destroyed. Atsutsuki Yurashiki has Rinnegan. To Ryuji's surprise, Yuzumaki Naruto's eyes snapped open the moment he saw Atsutsuki Yurashiki on screen. And, it's Satomo Rinnegan. The surprise on Yuzumaki Naruto's face caused Ryuji to freeze. He was a little confused as to what was going on with Naruto, knowing that the shinobi world was about to be destroyed, how could they still look happy? Then he heard Naruto's meaningful words, these eyes, if they were used to perform the samsara of heavenly life technique, Nagato and Nikki, with his strength, how wide do you think it could be? Samsara of heavenly life technique. Yuzumaki Nagato's pupils flickered as if he knew what Yuzumaki Naruto was going to say. Suppressing the throb in his heart, Yuzumaki Nagato deeply looked at Naruto. He finally understood what the number one reckless shinobi meant. With Atsutsuki Yurashiki's strength, far exceeding that of six paths, if he could wield the samsara of heavenly life technique, he might be able to envelop the entire shinobi world with it. After saying so, Yuzumaki Nagato gulped. Naruto, do you want Atsutsuki Yurashiki to use the samsara of heavenly life technique to resurrect the dead? Yuzumaki Nagato's voice was tinged with undisguised shock. Yes, that's right. Naruto stated with determination, squinting at the screen. Since he can resurrect the people who have recently died in the entire shinobi world, then we should go and catch him. Make him bring everyone back to life. The corners of Naruto's mouth were slightly raised, and his eyes looked out of the left-hand window of the bridge. He was high above the ground and could directly overlook everything on the deck of the world arc, and fully appreciate the vastness of the world arc. It was precisely for this reason that Naruto felt that the world arc could completely fit everyone in the shinobi world. Then why not take the whole shinobi world with them to other worlds? Let's go. Go to the shinobi world. I want Atsutsuki Yurashiki's eyes. Naruto waved his small hand in a domineering motion. Yuzumaki Nagato glanced at Ryuji in front of him. Seeing that the other party had no objection, he suddenly felt suspicious. According to his understanding, the other party was advocating for his own escape, and simply wouldn't go to the shinobi world with Naruto. Now, the other party had no objection. Could he possibly have other intentions? 
At this thought, Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes quietly narrowed as if to see through the guy. Ryuji noticed Yuzumaki Nagato's eyes. His expression didn't change at all, but his heart was pleased. Go ahead, go ahead. As long as the Ark reaches the Shinobi world, and the system feels that the World Ark may be destroyed by this Zombie Leviathan, it will completely hand over the World Ark to me. When that happens, I don't have to care about Naruto. I don't have to care about the Leviathan. I'll just run away. I have two chakra fruits in my hands anyway. Ryuji believed that he wouldn't be as miserable in another world as he was here. Whoosh. With Yuzumaki Naruto's command, Ryuji didn't bother about anything else, and the world arc suddenly flashed with light and flew towards the shinobi world. At the same time, in the shinobi world, Ichiha Madara and Senju Hashirama appeared in the center of Kanoha's battle. As soon as they appeared and looked at Kanoha's wretched sight, the two were startled. In the distant sky, the terrible monster was still hovering in the air, slowly swimming into the distance. That's Ichiha Madara narrowed his eyes at the battle not far away, where three figures flying in midair were besieging the rampant figure in the center. It's Atsutsuki Kagaya, Atsutsuki Tanari and him. Ichiha Sasuke. Why is he in the group besieging Atsutsuki Yurashiki? Besides, his eyes Rinnegan. No, except for the Atsutsuki clan, I should be the only one in the entire shinobi world. Why was there another person with a Rinnegan? Ichiha Madara was a little confused, but that didn't stop him from joining the fray. His eyes directly changed from Eternal Manjakyo to Rinnegan. In the next moment, Ichiha Madara stomped on the ground, and around his body, Susanu was instantly formed and charged towards Atsutsuki Yurashiki. You worm, how dare you overreach. Atsutsuki Yurashiki let out a cold snort. His only remaining palm slapped towards Ichiha Madara, and Ichiha Madara, who was in a rush, instantly felt a terrifying force sweep over him. Then, this terrifying force directly exploded and tore his impure world reincarnated body apart. But soon, Ichiha Madara's body recovered and rushed back towards Atsutsuki Yurashiki, trying to kill him. He wasn't afraid of dying. Looking at Ichiha Madara's crazy look, Atsutsuki Yurashiki's already gloomy expression became even gloomier. These people who surrounded him. His and Atsutsuki Kagaya's strength would have been similar, but he could also see that his opponent had power, but not enough combat experience. Therefore, Atsutsuki Kagaya couldn't put much pressure on him. Even Atsutsuki Tanari couldn't suppress him. After all, his truth seeker orb had been corrupted by the zombie leviathan, and his strength had regressed. Even now, he couldn't send out the same kind of attack that cut through the ruins of the moon. On the contrary, the guy who angered and worried Atsutsuki Yurashiki the most was Ichiha Sasuke. Shit. Although the kid was weak, he couldn't catch him or beat him to death. This Ichiha Sasuke is a fucking talent. He could control the fluid falling from the zombie leviathan to use as a weapon. Shit. Why didn't I think of that? If I could collect some of the zombie leviathan's fluids to directly melt Ichiha Sasuke, at least I wouldn't be in this situation right now. Moreover, Ichiha Madara's entry into the battle gave Atsutsuki Yurashiki a bad feeling in his heart. If Ichiha Madara also joined the battle, would others be far behind? Even if he was Atsutsuki Yurashiki, and was much stronger than these people, however, even a tiger could be overwhelmed by a swarm of mice. Whoosh. A looming ship suddenly appeared above the crowd, followed by two figures in red cloud robes appearing directly from above and dashing toward them. Naruto and Nagato. The moment he saw them, Ichiha Madara's eyes snapped open. Both the way they appeared and the way Nagato was now lunging straight at Atsutsuki Yurashiki with Naruto in tow, made Ichiha Madara flinch. With Yuzumaki Nagato's cautiousness, it was impossible for him to let Naruto die. However, Naruto looked like he was determined, and Nagato was the secondary attacker. Does Naruto have a big killer move in his hand? No way. Not only Ichiha Madara, the others present, and even the shinobi crowd were looking at Yuzumaki Naruto in disbelief. No one knew how and when, but the images on the live broadcast screens, all over the shinobi world, switched to Yuzumaki Naruto. At the moment, on screen, Naruto's young face looked solemn. Die. Atsutsuki Yurashiki also noticed Naruto and Yuzumaki Nagato's intentions, and with a cold shout, blasted a fist directly at Yuzumaki Nagato, regardless of the small sidekick looking kid beside him. Boom. There was a sharp sonic boom from his fist. Yuzumaki Nagato couldn't act carelessly. When he saw that Naruto was close to Atsutsuki Yurashiki, Yuzumaki Nagato pulled away. Lightly using Skywalk, he directly moved towards Antali, avoiding Atsutsuki Yurashiki's attack. 
After stunning Yuzumaki Nagata with a punch, Atsutsuki Urashiki raised his left foot and kicked at Yuzumaki Naruto. But before he could fully execute his movements, before his feet landed on Naruto, Yuzumaki Naruto's cold, a relentless voice suddenly rang out. Toad seal. Seal it for me. Swish. Atsutsuki Urashiki's body froze in place as if he had lost half of his soul. Ha, it works pretty well. At this moment, Yuzumaki Naruto, her long red hair fluttered, and her whole body fiercely erupted with fury. As an expert in sealing techniques, she naturally knew that the sealing technique from Mount Maiboku used Naruto's physical potential to overdraw the strength of his body and soul. Otherwise, the current Naruto simply couldn't spark enough power to seal Atsutsuki Urashiki. Looking at the effect of the Toad Clan sealing technique, Yuzumaki Kashina had a rare look of disdain on her face. Sealing the soul. Instant killing blow. Such a twisted jutsu. Originally, the exam space had said, Gamma Meru, the great toad sage in Mount Maiboku, was a beast of the same era as the sage of six paths. Originally, she was still a little skeptical. But now she believed it. Gamma Meru's methods were so bizarre. He must be stronger than the sage of six paths. Kagaya-sama. Yuzumaki Naruto waved his hand at Atsutsuki Kagaya, who was dumbstruck by the sudden change in the battle. A sudden feeling of weakness came over Yuzumaki Naruto, and he wobbled a bit. Behind him, Yuzumaki Nagato instantly flickered towards him and held him up. Lend me Black Zetsu. Hmm. Black Zetsu, who was in her sleeve, popped his head out and felt offended. What are you going to do? Atsutsuki Kagaya, who could hardly hide the shock in her gaze, asked curiously. Let him possess this person and use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique. Bring everyone who had died in the Shinobi world back to life. I want to take them to another world together. This. Not to mention Atsutsuki Kagaya, even Ichihem Madara thought Naruto was crazy at this moment. Go to another world. What the hell? He had seen Atsutsuki Kagaya's means. He knew that they could go to another world, but which of those worlds was suitable for survival? Their environment may be worse than the current shinobi world. And resurrect everyone with the samsara of heavenly life technique Naruto. Are you fucking crazy Ichihem Madara took a deep look at Yuzumaki Naruto. At this moment, he saw something shining on Naruto, it was a sense of duty. Naruto, under the tutelage of Yuzumaki Nagato, had changed his sense of duty and mission from Konoha to the entire shinobi world. At this moment, not only did he care for these few people, but the entire shinobi world. Naruto's boyish face was now full of determination, and the six fox whiskers not only didn't diminish his temperament at the moment, but added three points of brightness. This scene was broadcast live to the whole world. For a moment, all the survivors stared at Yuzumaki Naruto. He wants to resurrect everyone. In the land of iron, a samurai gawked at the screen. His hands were carrying two women, one big and one small. His wife and daughter died in the collapse of their house just now. He thought his life was hopeless and was about to kill himself, but to his surprise, there was a turn of events. Resurrect everyone. Yuzumaki Naruto, he. As long as you can do it, I will die for you. The samurai raised his head and stared at Yuzumaki Naruto on the screen. Out of the corner of his eye, he looked at Atsutsuki Kagai opposite Naruto, and his heart suddenly worried. Will, she agree. Yuzumaki Naruto. As long as you revive my wife, my life will be yours. In Sunagakur, there was a glint in the eyes of a rugged bearded man. There was a woman lying at his side, with a pregnant belly. Please, you must resurrect my wife. The bearded shinobi looked at Yuzumaki Naruto and directly knelt down. He was just an ordinary person, an ordinary person without any chakra. He had nothing to give back to Naruto, but this life. Not only him, but also countless people were praying and pleading to Yuzumaki Naruto at this moment. Although Naruto couldn't see it, and he didn't know that it was being broadcast live to the entire shinobi world, what Naruto had said gave all those who were thinking of dying a little hope. Atsutsuki Kagaya's beautiful eyes gently blinked and said nothing. She just lifted her head. Mother Black Setsu's hesitant voice sounded. He didn't expect that his mother would actually agree. Go on. Atsutsuki Kagaya's voice was soft, then an invisible force wrapped Black Setsu and pulled him towards Atsutsuki Urashiki. Sending Black Setsu out, Atsutsuki Kagaya suddenly turned cold. She turned towards Ichiha Sasuke. Swish. Almost instantly, Ichiha Sasuke felt that his body was imprisoned. Not only his body, but his soul also couldn't move. You, why did you do it? Atsutsuki Kagaya's voice carried a hint of sorrow. Even tears had begun to flow from her eyes. Let me see the real you. 
As Atsusuke Kagaya said this, not far away, Ichiha Sasuke's body slumped and fell straight down. And in the same place, like a cicada molting, a translucent figure appeared. That's the Sage of Six Paths. The moment they saw the translucent figure, Ichiha Midara and Senju Hashirama froze. They looked at the Sage of Six Paths with horror. Especially, Ichiha Midara, he didn't think that the Sage of Six Paths was still in the shinobi world. Suddenly, the corner of Ichiha Midara's mouth slightly lifted. Looking at the Sage of Six Paths with his head hanging, Ichiha Midara crossed his arms and watched the fun. He was going to see how Atsutsuki Kagaya would face the Sage of Six Paths in this situation. At the same time, feeling the powerful force that imprisoned his soul, the Sage of Six Paths' expression suddenly turned extremely ugly. The gloomy face, matched with the prominent horns on his head, looked incomparably scary for a while. You are no longer the same. Atsusuki Kagaya shook her head disappointedly, and the tears in her eyes stopped. My Humura is dead, and so is my Hagoromo. You should disappear, too. Atsutsuki WHOOSH gently, as if a bubble had burst, the Sage of Six Paths' translucent body dissipated pure chakra. Then Atsutsuki Kagaya, as if she had done nothing important, looked at Atsutsuki Urashiki. At this moment, Black Zetsu had already parasitized Atsutsuki Urashiki's body. I'm going to start. Black Zetsu glanced at Yuzumaki Naruto and softly said so. He wondered why his mother had agreed to Yuzumaki Naruto's request, allowing himself to resurrect the people who had died throughout the shinobi world during this time. And he said something about going to another world. Is he crazy? Hey, 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 who has captured a white Zetsu somewhere? Quick, get me a white Zetsu. Haydn's urgent shout suddenly sounded over the heads of many shinobi in the land of shinobi, leaving the group of shinobi a little confused. What does he need a white Zetsu for at a time like this? Besides, who would have a white Zetsu at this time? Haydn san, I happen to have one here. Orochimaru's hoarse voice sounded, which made everyone freeze. When they turned around, they saw Orochimaru slowly walking over. The feminine face had a cold smile. Especially his eyes, at this moment, they gave off an indescribable feeling, strangely bizarre. You have one. Give it to me. Haydn's body swiftly descended from the sky, snatching the white Zetsu struggling in Orochimaru's hand. His other hand fumbled around in his pocket and took out a small piece of flesh. This is Canis. Yuzumaki Naruto is going to perform a reincarnation. That's the samsara of heavenly life technique. Haydn's voice sounded a bit urgent. Originally, he was thinking of killing all those who didn't understand his religion in the shinobi world, then asking the boss to resurrect her. Now the opportunity had come, he couldn't miss it. Impure World Reincarnation. Haydn clapped his hands together and directly used the Impure World Reincarnation technique. This technique was already taught to all the top leaders of the land of shinobi, and they had no difficulty in using it at all. Soon, a layer of soil wrapped around the white Zetsu in front of Haydn dissipated, and a small figure appeared in front of Haydn. Her face, still bearing the cracks of the dead. Samsar. Of heavenly life technique. Black Zetsu's reluctant voice sounded. Because he was facing the other way, he didn't see how Atsutsuki Kagaya disposed of the Sage of Six Paths. Although Atsutsuki Urashiki had lost an arm, how could such a thing be difficult for Black Zetsu? Swish. Almost instantly, an invisible wave centered around Black Zetsu spread towards the entire shinobi world. Crack, crack a mind-numbing sound rang out as a figure stood up from the ruins of the moon. I I this out. A Kanoha Genin froze and looked around. He looked at the figures coming out of the ruins, and didn't understand what was happening for a while. He only remembered the last scene in his memory. It was when the moon had fallen. What happened to Kanoha? Everyone in Kanoha came to life and looked in horror at the ruins that filled their eyes. Kanoha is ruined again. Not only them but also in other parts of the shinobi world, people who had died came back to life. In the land of iron, a samurai was holding his wife and daughter in his arms. The corners of his mouth were raised high on his face, but tears were gushing from his eyes. The woman in his arms pushed the samurai away, looked disgustedly at a snotty samurai, and picked her daughter up. She looked up and down, saw nothing wrong, and only then put down her worried heart to ask. What's going on? I remember that I died. It's Yuzumaki Naruto. In Sun Agakur, the bearded man held his wife in his arms. At this moment, he seemed to embrace his whole world. Yuzumaki Naruto he murmured softly, his voice full of gratitude. Meanwhile, on the screen, Yuzumaki Naruto asked Yuzumaki Nagato beside him. We're broadcasting live right now, right? 
Seeing that Yuzumaki Nagato nodded, Yuzumaki Naruto then shouted to the whole shinobi world, Everyone, please go to the five major shinobi villages within three days. In three days, I will pick everyone up. Let's go to another world together. In the land of shinobi. Yuzumaki Kashina excitedly looked at her hands. She didn't know how, but she was resurrected. Yes. Resurrection. Completely resurrected. Everyone, come with me to Kanoha. Yuzumaki Kashina's voice was full of excitement, and her body shot straight ahead like an arrow. She's resurrected. While Yuzumaki Kashina was watching Yuzumaki Naruto on the broadcast screen. Looking at Naruto's pale face, her heart suddenly fell pain, and her speed soared again. Right now, she couldn't wait to hold Naruto in her living arms. And pinch his little face herself. Kashina. A figure appeared in front of Kashina, who didn't even notice them, and swept right past them. Looking at Kashina's face full of urgency, Ichihafugaku froze for a moment. He was a little confused. No? Very confused. What really happened between the time I died and when I came back to life? I understand why Naruto could still be standing there, but why is Yuzumaki Nagato still alive? Wouldn't he die after using the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique? Why would he resurrect me right now? Also, why are Atsutsuki Tanari and Atsutsuki Kagaya beside Naruto? Ichihafugaku fell into doubt. He didn't understand it. Did the world go crazy, or was he the one going crazy? Swish. 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 At that moment, a figure came whistling by, causing Ichihafugaku to snap out of his shock, and fix his eyes on none other than the crowd from the land of Shinobi. Not only that but there were some people from the Ichiha clan. Former Patriarch Fugaku. When an Ichiha clansman saw Ichiha Fugaku, he was overjoyed. He left the team to approach Ichiha Fugaku. Ichiha Fugaku's matter aside, in the shinobi world, the people heard Yuzumaki Naruto's words, and moved in the direction of the five major shinobi villages. Some people who had just been resurrected didn't understand what had happened and didn't want to leave, but to their surprise, the attitude of the people who didn't die seemed determined. They even went on their knees, asked, and begged them to go to the five major shinobi villages. And some people, hearing Yuzumaki Naruto's instructions, suddenly burst into smiles. Especially those wandering shinobi, they were the most excited. In their opinion, this was a good thing, to break the hierarchy in the shinobi community, and to break the monopoly of resources the five major shinobi villages had. Haha, <laughs> good. Great. The shinobi order has been reset, here's our chance. Haha, <laughs> to the other world. I'll be Naruto's champion. Conquer different worlds. Go, go, go. To Sun Agakur, go to Sun Agakur. Naruto-sama said, go to the five major ninja villages. If we're late, we might be miserably left behind. TSK, we haven't even met Naruto. You're already calling him Naruto-sama. Shut your trap, and you keep it shut. How can you just say Naruto so casually? That's right. If you dare to disrespect Naruto-sama again, I'll beat you to death. Just as the first great migration of the shinobi world was brewing, here, near Yuzumaki Naruto, another battle was taking place. Atsusuki Tenari looked at Ichiha Midara and Senju Hashirama, who were surrounding him, as Yuzumaki Naruto and Yuzumaki Nagato were behind them. In the distance, Atsutsuki Kagaya was watching. Don't fight yet. Naruto looked at Ichiha Midara and Atsutsuki Tenari, who were about to fight again. When his hands turned, a strange blue card appeared in his hands, and it was the reward he got in the survival exam. Is this the problem resolution card? Nagato, who was next to Naruto, was the first to recognize what Naruto was holding and looked at him in surprise. Hmm. We are all people of the shinobi world, and we shouldn't fight anymore. Naruto said, turning his gaze to Atsutsuki Kagaya. He knew that, according to the future the exam space had told them about, he would work together with Sasuke and seal this mother of chakra in front of him. But now, as he said, they were all part of the shinobi world. With the intent of going to another world together, they shouldn't fight anymore. Not only that, but they had to accumulate all the strength of the shinobi world and try to face the difficulties they would have in other worlds. After all, they were all going to be in strange new worlds. I need to ask something about the other worlds. Naruto said so and directly crushed the blue card in his hand. Yuzumaki Naruto, you have used the problem resolution card, you have three chances to ask a question. I want to ask, what is the next world we are going to visit? For other worlds, you can ask someone else. Your privileges are limited to answering questions about the shinobi world. Answer 1 finished. There are two chances left. Huh. Naruto's face suddenly froze. 
He didn't expect to get such an answer back, and moreover, the exam space still deducted a chance from that kind of answer. Then, second question, who should I ask about the other worlds? Ryuji. Answer 2 finished. There is one chance left. So, his name is Ryuji. Izumaki Nagato squinted and swept his eyes at the world R, that appeared as if it was a natural thing that existed in the sky, and a look of realization appeared on his face. That's it. I'm going to ask the last question. How do we kill that zombie leviathan? Ignite the dragon veins and detonate the shinobi world. The energy would be enough to turn the zombie leviathan into ash. Seeing the answer given by the exam space, Naruto's face suddenly showed a trace of shock. He didn't expect the method given by the exam space to be so powerful. Ignite the dragon veins, and detonate the shinobi world. That's not to mention Naruto, at this moment, even Yuzumaki Nagato and the others behind Naruto were stunned. To kill this monster, we would have to sacrifice the entire shinobi world who would do that. Ichiha Madara squinted at Atsutsuki Kagaya not far away. This kind of thing, let alone them, even Atsutsuki Teneri wouldn't be able to do. Igniting dragon veins was not difficult. He could do it himself, but setting the shinobi world ablaze was something that only Atsutsuki Kagaya could do. His Ryuji. Atsutsuki Kagaya felt that everyone was looking at her, and the lonely voice slowly came out. She had certain feelings for the forbearance world, and she wouldn't agree to detonate it without knowing what would happen next when Naruto took her and the others to the next world. He's the guy in the arc. Naruto pointed to the world arc above. Kagaya looked at the floating world arc overhead, her pair of beautiful eyes gently narrowed. From this ship, she felt some kind of resistance. As if it wouldn't allow her to board. Atsutsuki Kagaya knew the origin of the ship. It was a prize awarded to Yuzumaki Naruto by the exam space. So, she understood that she couldn't board the ship without Yuzumaki Naruto's permission. What do you know about the other world? Atsutsuki Kagaya looked at Yuzumaki Naruto. She was curious and cautious about the other world. After all, who knew if there were monsters like that in the other world, or if there were enemies like Atsutsuki Yurashiki. Hearing Atsutsuki Kagaya's inquiry, everyone instantly looked at Yuzumaki Naruto, only to see Yuzumaki Naruto shake his head. Just when everyone was a little disappointed, they suddenly heard Yuzumaki Naruto say. This zombie leviathan is summoning a group of leviathans. If it's allowed to summon the leviathan group to the shinobi world, the shinobi world will be destroyed. Naruto's voice was faint, but it caused everyone's faces to turn pale. They looked up in horror and looked at the distant sky. However, they couldn't even see the shadow of the zombie leviathan anymore. Naruto, did you just say it is trying to summon other leviathans? Ichihamadara's eyes were filled with fear. A single leviathan had already caused such chaos in the shinobi world. It took a falling moon to kill it, and it still turned into a zombie leviathan. Everyone thought that since it had turned into a zombie leviathan, they could just wait for its flesh and blood to get depleted. But to their surprise, this zombie leviathan was trying to summon other leviathans. If other leviathans or even a swarm of leviathans came to their world, then the shinobi world would indeed be destroyed by those beasts, as Naruto said. Ichiha Madara and Yuzumaki Nagato knew, as Fugaku had told them, that the largest of those monsters had the size of a planet. This 10,000 meter long leviathan is just a seedling in front of that kind of leviathan. I agree. Atsutsuki Kagaya blinked, raised her hand, and pulled Black Setsu back into her sleeve, quietly looking at Naruto. Three days later. Three days went by in the blink of an eye. In these three days, all the people in the shinobi world were moving like the great human migration, with everyone doing their best to make their way to the center of the five major shinobi villages. Naruto, Yuzumaki Nagato, and the others were on the world arc, waiting for three days to collect all the people of the shinobi world, in the world arc. I never thought that we would be meeting again like this. The fourth Hokage, Namaka's Minato, looked at Yuzumaki Kashina, who had just boarded the Ark, with a warm smile on his face. Kanahagakur had been destroyed. At this moment, he was no longer Kanoha's cage. He was just Yuzumaki Kashina's husband and Yuzumaki Naruto's father. Humph. Yuzumaki Kashina gave him an unimpressed look, but was relieved to see that the other party was also completely resurrected. She thought that the corpse fluid of the beast would turn him to ashes, just like the third Hokage and Shimura Danzo. Fortunately, the other party was still alive. Where's Naruto? Yuzumaki Kashina's brow relaxed. She was about to continue talking when she suddenly saw Yuzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Hinata not far away, flying with a glowing blue lump of iron under their feet. Mom. Dad. 
Arriving a few meters in front of the pair, Naruto leaped straight down from above and wrapped them in his arms. Next to him, Hayuga Hinata was looking at her hands nervously, wondering how she could join in. Yuzumaki Kashina, noticing Hinata's appearance, flickered, and in the next moment, took Hinata directly into her arms. Ah. Not far away, Hayuga Hiyashi spoke softly, standing beside his wife and the newly resurrected Hayuga Hanabi. Because the blow from the moon was so great, those of them who were saved by Namika's Minato and Senju Taburama, died in the impact. But now, they were all resurrected. It was worth mentioning that, Senju Taburama, because he was drenched with the zombie leviathan fluid, his soul melted. When Black Setsu used the reincarnation technique, he was already gone. Therefore, he couldn't be resurrected. Similarly, there were no other resurrected cages from other villages that were in the impure world reincarnated state. That girl has grown up. Hayuga Hiyashi watched Hinata run to Kashina's family and shook his head helplessly, but there was no hint of discontent on his face. Because of their withdrawal from the battlefield, they were the second group to board the World Ark. With his position as leader of the Hayuga clan, there was some information that he naturally knew more about. For example, this ship belonged to Naruto. Another example was, Naruto wasn't going to let them form shinobi villages on this ship. He even heard that Akatsuki Ah, no, the top leaders of the land of shinobi and the 5x cages, would be the ones to have a say on this ship from now on. Originally, he tacitly agreed that Hinata and Yuzumaki Naruto could start a relationship because he envisioned the boy's future achievements. After all, being able to save Konoha in that situation, and that strength, coupled with his future Hokage status, would surely ensure the position of the Hayuga clan while he was in office. This was the direct reason why he allowed Naruto to get close to Hinata. But now what else could he do? Naruto had power now, but his position. Hayuga Hiyashi watched as a group of people swarmed in the distance, calling Yuzumaki Naruto's name. Where's Yuzumaki Naruto? Naruto-sama. He saved my wife. I'm going to let him marry my daughter. Bah. Just that daughter of yours who can blow in a gust of wind, and you still want to marry Naruto. My daughter is 1.5 meters and 68 kilograms. I'll give her to Naruto for free. Oh, no wonder it's free. Father, Aichiha Sasu clucked at Ichiha Fugaku with a gloomy look on his face. Ichiha Izumi died because of him. Itachi was dead too. The Leviathan also came to the shinobi world because of his deeds. A lot of people couldn't be resurrected because of him, the past is the past. Ichiha Fugaku patted Sasuke on the shoulder and gently comforted him. It's just that Sasuke didn't see the grief in Fugaku's eyes, let alone the haggard look on Makoto's face behind Fugaku. Both Ichiha Itachi and Sasuke, apart from their blood, weren't really close to them as much as Ichiha Izumi was. Fugaku and Makoto's grief over Izumi's death was even greater than the time they found out about Itachi's death. You have to walk this new path. You're strong now. Go find Naruto. You can help him. Ichiha Fugaku said so and turned back to Mikoto, who was carrying a large belly. They walked off into the distance, his back, for a moment, seemed to have gone through a lot of hardships. Fugaku. We have to do this, Mikoto looked at Fugaku with a slightly sad face. Just now, Fugaku seemed to be comforting Sasuke, but in reality, he was just pushing Sasuke towards Naruto. It's for his own good. A cold look flashed across Fugaku's face. Everyone in the shinobi world was now on this ship. In other words, Yuzumaki Naruto was now the highest centralized authority in the shinobi world. Except for Yuzumaki Naruto, no one else had the authority to throw people off the world arc. As far as he knew, not only the big clans of Konoha, but clans from the other shinobi villages, were trying to get close to Yuzumaki Naruto in every way possible. He even heard that Atsutsuki Kagaya left Black Setsu at the central bridge as a strategist. Atsutsuki Kagaya's reason was also simple. In the future, facing an unfamiliar world, Black Zetsu's strategy and resourcefulness are better than anyone in the shinobi world. Naruto, you can ask him anything. After saying that, Atsutsuki Kagaya left without looking back. Yuzumaki Naruto hesitated, but there was no way to refute it. Black Zetsu had the ability to use anyone in the shinobi world as a pawn. In front of him, not to mention Senjutsunade, the general council of the allied shinobi forces, even Kanoha's Nara clan, plus the strategist of the other shinobi villages, were no match for him. So Black Setsu was inexplicably shoved in. Not to mention Yuzumaki Naruto, even Yuzumaki Nagato couldn't do anything about it. It was absolute. Taking everyone who came to Kanoha into the Ark, Yuzumaki Naruto took control of the World Ark, and sailed to the next gathering point Sunagakur. Where's Ryuji? 
appearing in the bridge room with Yuzumaki Kashina, Hinata, and Minato, Yuzumaki Naruto glanced around. He felt confused when he didn't see the guy there. Then immediately realized that the other party, mysterious and unpredictable, with a part of the authority over the world arc, had hidden somewhere on the ship. He really couldn't find him. After all, this world arc was bigger than the shinobi world ever was. Not to mention it could accommodate all the living creatures in the shinobi world. It could even accommodate more than that. The world arc was very fast and could arrive at Sunagakur in 10 minutes. At the moment, in Sunagakur, a large number of people were already gathered. Despite the increasingly harsh conditions in Sunagakur, with the shelter from Suna Shinobi, these people arrived in Sunagakur safely. Not only humans, but some summoned beasts also came to Sunagakur. They spoke out and begged the shinobi in Sunagakur to give them a chance to survive. Some of them were extremely large, and at a glance, you can tell that they were exceedingly strong, but they were acting really humble right now. At this moment, with the arrival of the world arc, all kinds of summoned beasts eagerly looked at the world arc. The environment of the shinobi world was getting worse and worse, and it was no longer suitable for survival. They knew that their future was in Yuzumaki Naruto's hands. Their lives were at Yuzumaki Naruto's mercy. But to their surprise, with the arrival of the world arc, a ramp reached down directly from the ship and reached them. Then, a series of figures ran down from the ship, and spontaneously stood in two rows on both sides of the ramp, just like guards. Just when everyone thought that some high-ranking person would step down, the group of shinobi directly spoke to the countless people below, all of you will board the ship in an orderly manner. Once you have registered on board, you will be led to your accommodation. All summoned beasts, while on board, must abide by the rules, and no fighting is allowed. Otherwise, they will be expelled from the ship. As the voice dropped, the figures began to walk in an orderly manner. On the ship, these people finally saw the vastness of the world arc. Before they could close their wide open mouths, someone came and took them away to be identified and documented. Soon, everyone in Sunagakur had boarded the ship, and under the reluctant gaze of the Suna people, the world ship jumped straight ahead and flew off towards Kurigakur. Soon, everyone from the five major villages was on the ship. It was worth mentioning that the toads of Mount Maiboku, the snakes of Ryuchi Cave, and Suna's slugs from Shikatsu Forest, also dropped their feuds and boarded the ship from the shinobi villages. Naruto paid special attention to the fact that Gamma Meru and the White Snake Sage didn't board the ship, along with the Toad Swarm and the Snake Seed. They had made their choice. Naruto, everyone in the shinobi world is already on board, except for some old people who don't want to leave. Mom. Are they really not leaving? Hmm. Yuzumaki Kashina sighed and was about to console Naruto when suddenly she suddenly heard Naruto say. It's their choice, and we have to respect them. Mom, everyone, let's go. A few minutes later, Naruto and his group arrived at the bridge of the world arc, which served as the very center of the world arc and overlooked everything. The shinobi world arc slowly took off, carrying nearly the entirety of the shinobi world, as it weaved its way towards the stars. As the world arc continued to travel through space. Ten minutes later, it arrived in this starry sky. Everyone from the shinobi world was looking out of the windows or at the live screen overhead, watching the blue-colored planet in the distance. Boom. A ring of dust, visible to the naked eye, suddenly appeared from within the shinobi world, expanding as fast as a wave of seawater, followed by a violent explosion. But this time, the explosion was not like any other. It first violently spread out and then, as if reaching a certain point, began to collapse itself at a rapid pace. In the blink of an eye, the explosion actually compressed halfway inwards and disappeared. With it, the entire shinobi world disappeared. With the disappearance of the shinobi world, a crack in space-time suddenly began to appear in the starry sky, where the crowd was as if the universe had become extremely unstable, and was about to destroy itself. Naruto, what's next? Yuzumaki Nagato and the others looked at the disappearing shinobi world with strange expressions on their faces. They were about to continue to ask Naruto, but suddenly, a glowing gate flew out from the world arc, rapidly grew in the void of space, and finally landed in front of the arc. Haha. <laughs> Let's go. To a new world. Yuzumaki Naruto saw the world gate appear, smiled, and waved his hand. All the shinobi on the world arc began to muster their chakra. Um replenished by the chakra of these shinobi, the world arc suddenly hummed, followed by a flash on the hull, and it directly went into the world gate. The world gate flickered for a few moments and finally disappeared with a bang. In the distance, only a pale world was left, gradually disintegrating. 
In the darkness of space, a deep portal slowly opened. Then, an incredibly large ship slowly sailed out of it. It was like a whale swimming, constantly moving forward in the void. Looming like a ghost. Every time it disappeared and reappeared, it crossed tens of thousands of meters in distance. In the blink of an eye, it approached a blue planet. There's a shinobi world in this world too. Yuzumaki Naruto, who had considerably matured after three years in the wormhole, stood on the bridge of the world arc in a daze. Behind him, Black Setsu, who already had his own body, shook his head slowly as he heard Naruto's words. Right now, there were no more than five people on this ship who could beat him head to head. There's a lot more land in the shinobi world than here. This planet is all sea, except for that one vertical and one horizontal dots of island. Although Black Setsus had a body of his own, it was also created by Atsutsuki Kagaya with her yin yang release. Therefore, at the moment, Black Zetsu had a pitch black body. Black Setsu's eyes flickered for a moment, as he spoke to Naruto, tell everyone about this, just say, we found a habitable planet. With that, Black Zetsu's lips froze in a menacing arc. Also, Naruto, remove the protective shield from the perimeter of the world arc. Haven't some people been disobedient these past few years, then give them a chance to be cannon fodder. This seeing Black Zetsu say that, Yuzumaki Naruto's face instantly showed a somewhat reluctant expression. It wasn't so much that he had any compassion for the people Black Zetsu was talking about, but because Yuzumaki Naruto had some sympathy for the people on this unknown planet. Most of these guys who were stirring up trouble on the world ship and wanted to restore the class system of the shinobi world on the ship, were former wandering shinobi. If they placed these guys on this planet, people on this planet would probably suffer unjustifiably. The barrier should wait for a while. Even if it opens, those guys don't have the ability to travel across the void of space anyway. Yuzumaki Naruto thought about it, but still rejected Black Zetsu's proposal. Call everyone first, then discuss how to face the world. Black Zetsu glanced at Naruto, his mouth dropping in disdain. Yuzumaki Naruto had really grown up very quickly, but he was still too young to be a proper manager. If bastards from the shinobi world could have staged a full-on descent of the gods scene, if the natives of this world weren't so strong enough. If those people were strong, on the one hand, they could get rid of these guys for us. On the other hand, we could also get information about the world. Kill three birds with one stone. But just because he couldn't bear it, he gave up. Naruto, do you want to go and invite that person? On the other side, Ichiha Madara suddenly asked. When they heard Ichiha Madara's words, there was a change in everyone's expression, without the need to think much about it, they all knew who Madara was talking about. Hmm, I'll try. Seeing Ichiha Madara say this, Yuzumaki Naruto's face also turned bitter. But he also knew that he was the only one on this ship who could barely hold his own against that guy right now. Others had trouble seeing him, let alone talk to him. Let's inform everyone first. A few minutes later, the central bridge room. A dozen people were sitting around a round table, and outside them, two dozen others were listening. Nara Shikamaru was scribbling bitterly with a pen, apparently the recorder of the meeting. After three years of floating, we finally found a planet suitable for human life. So, no matter what, we're going to check it out. The fourth rakage said so. There were no longer five major shinobi villages and numerous countries on board, only one land of shinobi. The shinobi and samurai of the entire shinobi world have days right, whatever the other side is, we have to scout everything. The third Tsuchikich cut to the chase. Tadara was sitting right behind him. He was listening to him, with his eyes half asleep and bloodshot, yawning wearily and flinging his boogers indifferently. Tadara had aged a lot since we saw him three years ago. Not only because of Inoki's nagging in the past three years, but a lot of it was because his identity had changed dramatically. He was now the father of two children. That's right. He's a father. Of two. Damn it. At the thought of this, Tadara was furious. When he first boarded the Ark, he was still an ignorant child. The old nosy Inoki actually paid too much attention to him because he didn't have to worry about the village on the Ark. On a dark spring breeze night, no, a shady dark night, he had drugged himself and Kurosuchi. God damn it. He had no memory of that night at all. If Kurotsuchi hadn't approached him three months later, saying that she was pregnant, Tadara wouldn't have known that he was no longer a virgin. The most terrible thing was, ten months later, Tadara was instantly shocked to see two little ones that weren't much bigger than his own exploding clay creations. Looking at the two little guys who are just like him, Tadara's full stomach complaints eventually turned into one sentence. 
Fu Yuk then, he started his father's career of serving milk, delivering water, wiping shit, and packing urine-filled diapers into the trash. Seriously, Tadara thought that serving these three were even more exhausting than going out to spar with Haydn and Conan. Ah, he yawned again. Tadara slowly closed his eyes, ready to take a nap. Yesterday in the middle of the night, the little lady was hungry and cried for half a night. His big madam was too lazy to feed her, so she left him to find a way on his own. Ha now his left chest still hurts a bit. I would have thought that a little baby would bite something with her teeth when she couldn't suck anything out. God damn it. Grow up soon. So I can beat you. Dadar. Don't you think so? Hum. Did they call me? Hearing Anoki calling his name, Dadar waved his hand wearily. Yes, you're right about everything. Right now, I'm not saying we should give up on this planet. I'm asking people what their attitude is towards this planet. Naruto had an approachable smile on his face, with Yuzumaki Kashina at his side and Yuzumaki Nagato on his other. It was worth mentioning that, under Kashina's instigation, Yuzumaki Karen boldly pursued Yuzumaki Nagato. Now, although they hadn't taken the last step, they were in love with each other. Konan and the Akatsuki group who saw them, were rendered speechless. There's a difference of over 10 years, and to put it mildly, Yuzumaki Nagato could be Yuzumaki Karen's father. It's Yuzumaki Kashina's fault. Attitude. The fourth Reikage snorted, they could still live on this planet to live on normally. If they don't agree, let the Chakra Cannon hang off the bow and talk some sense into them. While the fourth Reikage was speaking, Naruto observed the others. Seeing some nod their heads, Naruto's gaze moved slightly, but said nothing. After being taught by Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichihamidara in turns, Naruto was now a different person. Otherwise, it would be impossible for him to preside over such a big scene. What about the others? Hearing that Naruto was still asking what the others thought, Senju Hashirama's gaze moved slightly. He then glanced at Ichihem Madara before slowly saying, I think it's a good idea to reach out to the planet first. It's best to talk to the people who can make the decisions on this planet. Talk. What to talk about? Before Senju Hashirama could finish his words, Ichihem Madara's voice rang out. With the combat power on board, there's no need to talk. When Ichihamidara finished speaking, everyone directly ignored Ichihamidara's words. Over the years, everyone had discovered that whenever Senju Hashirama said anything at a meeting, Ichihamidara had to do the opposite, not express his own views at all. Seeing that the crowd was divided, Yuzumaki Naruto looked to Atsutsuki Tanari, who was at the bottom right. Tanari, what do you think? At that moment, Atsutsuki Tanari was closing his eyes, as if perceiving something. Hearing that Naruto had called him, Tanari opened his eyes. This world is a mess. Tanari opened his mouth and made the crowd freeze, then quickly realized that he had just closed his eyes and was looking at this strange world. Mess. What kind of mess? Could it be as chaotic as our shinobi world? A few seats behind Tanari, Jiraiya's gaze slightly twitched. Once in the shinobi world, there was a saying. He, Jiraiya, had the final say on whether the shinobi world was chaotic or not. Even worse. Atsusuki Tanari had a smile on his face. In the short time he had observed the world, there were no fewer than a thousand wars in the world. At least a few dozen people died at the same time. Yes, with thousands of battles and only so few deaths, Atsusuki Tanari found that the world was extraordinarily rough. A real fighter. Moreover, many of the people in this world seemed to be in possession of strange jutsus. Wait. Suddenly, a dazzling light suddenly bloomed in Atsutsuki Tanari's blue tensigan. Then, he stood up and looked at the screen in front of the bridge. Seeing the way Atsutsuki Tanari seemed to have spotted something, Yuzumaki Naruto hastily stood up and turned around to follow Tanari's gaze. At this glance, Yuzumaki Naruto instantly found something strange. At the moment, a golden ship was slowly flying out of the planet that was nearly all water. Someone is on that ship, alone. Atsutsuki Tanari pointed to the golden ship that was slowly flying. Almost instantly, the eyes of Yuzumaki Naruto and everyone behind him, burst into dazzling light. Catch him without hesitation, Yuzumaki Naruto gave a direct order, and the crowd in the bridge room instantly dispersed. In the next moment, the entire world arc seemed to have awakened. Charge the chakra cannons. Charge it up quickly. 10% charge. 20%. 30%. Estimated charging time is 1 minute. Aim on the other side of the ship, don't shoot. Avoid the planet behind it. The fourth Reikid shouted at the top of his lungs. In front of him, a group of shinobi frantically poured their chakra into the chakra cannons. 
they had rehearsed this countless times, in order to avoid difficulties in an unfamiliar world. At the moment, in this strange new world, they weren't bound by villages or restricted by countries, they all had the same goal. That was, to find or grab a place in this strange world that was large enough for everyone to survive. Long range assault brigade ready to initiate artillery support. At the side panel of the world arc, Atsutsuki Tanari, Black Zetsu, Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Midar, were waiting for the word from Yuzumaki Naruto. Everyone, this is our first battle in this world. We don't know what the other means, so be careful. Do it. As soon as Yuzumaki Naruto's voice fell, the protective barrier of the world arc in front of the four of them opened up. Then, the four directly flew towards the golden ship. As Naruto removed the world arc's protective barrier, the world ship's figure suddenly appeared tangible from the Maxim. Damn that Mujiwar. In the golden Maxim ship, a tall man with long pierced ears was lying on the bow, crossing his legs and eating an apple. His name was Enel. I never thought that I would be defeated by an unknown child pirate from the Blue Sea. What a shame. He felt that there was no place for him in the sea, so he was going to sail his golden ship directly into space. Boom. There was a loud sound, and the Maxim shuddered, as if it had hit something. What's going on? The man got up in confusion. With a half-bitten apple in his mouth, he walked out of the cabin. He should be in the starry sky by this time. How could I possibly hit something? Enel muttered as he pushed the door to the cabin, and then his whole body froze outright. This, this, how can there be such a big ship? With his head lifted up, he looked overhead at the ship that was as large as his eye could see. His whole body was dumbfounded. Looking at the blue planet behind, and looking at the giant ship in front of him, he was horrified to find that the giant ship in front of him was about the same size as the planet behind him. How is that possible? Even the rumored Noah in the blue sea couldn't have been that big, could it? Fortunately, his own Maxim ship was made of gold and was strong enough. Hum. Just as there was some pity on his face, a sudden feeling of danger came over his heart. With no time to think about it, he turned into thunder, and instantly appeared on the upper deck of his own ship, looking down at the figure that appeared in his place just now. It was a figure in a robe with red clouds and black background. Their body was tall and thin, and strangely enough, a spiral pattern in their eyes, eagerly looking at him. Who dares to attack this god? With a cold snort, Anil instantly unleashed his rumble rumble fruit ability. A thunderbolt as thick as his arm came down directly on Yuzumaki Nagato from above his head. Crack. Lightning flashed. His eyes suddenly narrowed. Just when the lightning was about to hit the other party, an invisible spherical barrier suddenly appeared outside the person's body, blocking the lightning attack. Who are you? Space pirates. He was secretly on alert. He didn't know much about the space pirates, but everything he had heard said that they were powerful and difficult to deal with. Especially since this bizarre space pirate had a pirate ship that seemed to be as big as a planet. He must be a very powerful pirate from space. I have to be careful. Once Shinra Tensei blocked the lightning attack of the other party, Yuzumaki Nagato's gaze moved slightly. The lightning release jutsu he just used didn't need seals, and the way the opponent had just transiently transformed was extremely strange. He was just more interested in what the other man had just called himself as opposed to that. God. This guy is the god of this world. Izumaki Nagato's eyes narrowed and flashed dangerously as he spoke in a clear cold voice and asked. So you call yourself a god? And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.